Timem's opening up with the rat bow, and Loge is opening with Morelia. And in, there's that boom buggy that you were talking about, the rockety graphic. Exactly that one, yes. Yeah, that's the one. Pretty standard opening, you know, early bridge control. Well, if only the second character could load into the game, that would also be great. Uh... Gnome is having a hard day, and here's here is that first boom buggy played out. Doing pretty good. Actually, Losh has a pretty nice little early XP lead here against Mem's Rappo. Uh, but this living statue with the boom buggy behind it, pushing down the bottom side right now for Mem, looks pretty good. Whirly Scrat a good answer to the skeletons, and the first Harbinger comes out from Loge. And is gonna lock onto that living statue. And the Scratillery and Boom Buggy combination deal with that harp pretty quickly. And Loge is taking a lot of damage now. He's down 700 health, 800, and counting. Still going down, living statues on his face, and the Whirly Scrat. The Boom Buggy is not quite connecting with him yet because of some minions spawned in but still that was a massive push from Mephisto there 1500 damage on Loge in the first push just two minutes in and it at this like point this... he has caught up with XP yeah this seems like this boom buggy sort of uh, statue push is proving quite effective just having the long range DPS behind and the huge tank in front it's uh, getting work done yeah it's a it's a pretty standard combo like you know the in theory anyway I, I haven't seen it with the boom buggy much I haven't seen much of the boom buggy recently but uh, it's a very standard combo you, you get some big guy out front and then you put a nice ranged unit behind and this living statue is just smacking at Loge it's connecting and that's gonna be game for Memphisto at two minutes and 15 seconds uh, very too. convincing uh, two minutes victory there for Memphisto in the first in the first round here or first game yeah anyhow very I decisive like, I feel like uh, I don't know, I feel like players like Loge, which are probably a bit newer to the game, might be a bit terrified to play against one of Memphis Joe's uh, stature in the first yeah. match of a tournament. Yeah, I mean, if you're a newer player and you've watched a little bit of competitive play and you, you see somebody like Mem and then you match into them, it, it definitely it, it puts a lot of pressure on you and it can make the game a lot harder than it is. Like the the mental side of the battle is is very, very difficult against a really experienced player like that, a really good player. Definitely, definitely. Also, another thing that did we mention that we still have sideboarding in this tournament? I don't know if we did. Uh, I don't think we mentioned it. No. Well, we do, chat. We do. And uh, if we have a quick look at the sideboards here, it seems well, Mephisto has an interesting present here in his sideboard. Guess that can be an interesting uh, wild card, quote-unquote. <laughs> yeah. It is pretty wild. Also, we have, uh, I mean, the shrine here. XP shrine, that could... That's, I mean, some interesting cards in Mephisto's sideboard that uh, can really shake up a few decks if he so chooses. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what he goes with. Um, really, I'm I'm curious to see what Loge ends up doing here, actually, and see how he switches up his own like lists going in. Because uh, it felt kind of like he just didn't have the right answers there, you know, like he was missing some tools to to deal with that push. Yeah, he did not have uh, everything he needed there. If he had. Would have, for example, used his uh, King Puff deck where he has Beam at least. That could have taken care of uh, the push in the early stages if we got the AoE on on all the relevant units. Otis having a Fireball as well, which he did not yeah. have in his uh, last matchup, as far as I saw. I, I don't believe I didn't see it either. Um... Lowest sideboard is a bit more, but I feel like stun lancers and defensos and those sort of cards are very, very common in sideboards uh, in these past tournaments. 
Though Mephisto does not have the uh, defensive, but they do both have stun lancers in, in the sideboard there. Also, uh, names again. I don't even know. Names Person again. that throws balls from a platform in the sky. Uh, Snake Trip? Uh, the, the three cost the root? Soul Stealer, no. Oh, yeah. Soul Stealer, Soul Stealer, though. Okay. <clears throat> I'm good with names, okay? <laughs> yeah. I, I swear. Honestly, it's it's you know what are you gonna do? Um, it, it happens. It's okay. It's been a while since I actually played this game, okay? I needed a need some focus to to get back into. You need the... a little bit of a crash course, you know, in the the things that are in here now. It's at okay. least it's I'm understood. I've at least yeah. understood that you need to destroy the enemy tower to win. That's correct. Right? Uh, yeah, you have to put it to zero. If you put them at zero HP before you hit zero HP, you win the game. You know, it's that simple. Uh, and as long as you know that, you know, you, you understand. We see this is a really, really similar to what we saw last time from Memphisto, only instead of a living statue, he's using this golem um, as his, his front line for this boom buggy. Really fun card, boom buggy. Looks really neat, you know. Fires out the the rockets. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, I do love that the rockets target individually. It seems, which is uh, quite a nice thing. It'd be interesting to see if Loge can protect this harbinger a little bit better than he has been the last game. Uh, Did Loge the... change his deck, by the way, in this? Uh... Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of shiz. Well, I'm getting at least some crazy lag spikes, so don't mind me, chat. Oh, there's the lag in the matted again, you know. Uh, so Lush uses the skeletons here from his, his book to split and get these lanes. And, uh, you know, this solicitor is not gonna get a lot of value again and we blocks onto this crystal golem and the boom buggy takes care of it it seems that mephisto has this sort of uh like same base plan of you have the boom buggy you have the tank unit in front and then you just push on yeah yeah he's really just leaning into the classic uh classic strategy for games like this and it's working pretty well for him he is he is down a bit of xp here Mephisto is way more of a, well, at least he has been way more of a sort of cool, collected, uh, slow player. He's not usually one for uh, hyper-aggressive uh, smork decks. Yeah, yeah, he definitely plays in that style, you know, that more uh, controly mid-range thing, you know, a little bit later on style. Um, and that being said, you know, I mean, he is down a bit of XP, but it's not likely to to be the end of the world here you know like memphisto knows how to play from this small deficit and it's not a massive lead either uh although morelia's perk three is pretty strong and if you don't play around it properly it can definitely win the game uh but memphisto's you know a player who knows how to play around things like he, he's not gonna Definitely. panic he's not gonna make misplays he's not really gonna do anything that's not calculated almost ever uh, yeah but still we'll see what the third perk here for uh for Loge can do maybe he can get a big push in and uh actually get mephisto under 2000 to start at least and here comes my dear that is a that is a big big dragon. I'll that is a, a large was... dragon. Honestly, one of the the coolest cards, or at least coolest looking cards in the game, I'd say. I I really like it. Um, yeah, it's and you very know, Memphis. Cool Memphis is dealing with it very very easily though. This is this is really I no mean... problem for him. The sad thing here is that the massive, majestic dragon gets stunned by a few lancers. Yeah. Ah, well, good try, sir. Beautiful, uh, I'm just gonna call it acid because that's what I did last tournament. Worked well <laughs> enough. I mean, you know, it's, uh, close enough. Acid, poison, same thing, basically. You know, they're green and they, uh, they hurt. Yeah. So. 
burn in one way or another, so... You know, yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll take it. We'll take it. And that, being said, that being said, you know, after having this Navir out and uh, and having that Morelia perk 3, that, that really big power point, Memphis is actually closer in experience now than he had been before the dragon. Um, yeah, he, he took... Yeah, he's, he's even now. Um, he took that dragon, <laughs> beat the dragon, and then he got the XP lead, actually. He's, he's now up, like, one. Uh, very, very close here. And honestly, if I'm Loge here, being even in XP on the way to Mana Frenzy, I mean, it, it might feel kind of good against a player like Memphisto who's got that experience. But once that Mana Frenzy hits, it's not going to feel good at all. You know, Memphisto, there's maybe only one or two other players in the game that are that are actually scarier than Memphisto in Mana Frenzy. Um, That's true. Maybe. I mean, I, Kat's arguably the only one, really, um, yeah. at this point. Mephisto, Mephisto is an is a incredible menace, uh, especially at Mana Frenzy. Yeah, I, mean, I have so. seen that. We have seen Loge here trying to fireball this boom buggy uh, two or three times from full health, but it seems to just barely survive, which must be uh, infuriating for him. Yeah, that's got to be really frustrating to see it live. Uh, that was a really good fireball for him, actually. That worked out really well. The the boom buggy yeah, played into it. Bit of luck there, uh, or well, luck positioning, whatever. However you want to call it, did work out well for him. Though. I mean, Fisto is, I mean, it's not that that high on health. I mean, they're fairly even on on the health. Uh, Point here, so that is uh, interesting. I mean, it's uh, a far not losing as quickly as it did last game. Yeah, we're we're definitely going all the way here. This is going to be a mana frenzy versus mana frenzy matchup. And Fisto hits it just a few seconds before. That well, we'll see if it spells the end for Loge or not. But if Mephisto can keep the two bridges here for even just a few seconds, that might be enough for Mephisto to just uh, get an edge that is not going to lose. Yeah, and I definitely think Memphisto has a good setup to control the bridges and hold that ad that advantage, that XP. Especially with the Stormbringer in the back there, just pinging and poking and uh, providing long range support. It's gonna be uh, gonna be difficult for Loja to push through here. Yeah, that that Stormbringer with perk three is really irritating. Just constantly pinging at everything that you play and. This is a pretty pretty well matchup, uh, pretty well done matchup at this point right now. Loge is playing pretty well here to, to hold on in this Mana Frenzy versus Mana Frenzy. It's actually yeah, staying relatively uh, even. He's not caving uh, yet, and he's yeah he's holding Mephisto off at a very respectable uh, sort of pace here. So, uh, good for him. We'll see if he can actually turn it around though, because this starting to lose a bit of HP. Yeah, and honestly, if you start to lose HP, you start having to play on the more defensive side, your opponent gets bridges for longer, that, that really does it in Mana Frenzy. The Harbinger here might be able to help him a bit, but... I mean... I don't know. It doesn't have the units he needs, I think, to really get bridge control and to, to keep it and to push over to the other side. I don't think Geologe has been on the other side of the bridge for a while now. Yeah, on the other hand, Memphisto has a lot of these ranged units that are just holding the bridge and, and stopping things from getting to them with the decent front line with these golems. Uh, the, like, if Loge had the golems, then it you know he would, he would be able to tank tons of Stormbringer pings and whatever else, but he doesn't really have that big tank unit on the side, which uh, is probably hurting him a bit at this point at least. He is getting a little bit of bridge control here on the bottom side, but he gets a second Harbinger out finally. But the first is about to go down and... Just did 10 minutes on the game clock as well, so uh, well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised since it's Mephisto playing on one side, but... Yeah, of course. Uh, that being, you know, also, also Lush is doing really, really well here. He's actually gaining HP a bit as the game goes on using the spell for HP from the book. Um, uh, that is, that's right. Which is really handy here, because like it, it gives him a little more leeway if he makes a mistake, it's not instantly over. Um, it still seems like overall is getting control here bit by bit. Not, not quickly, but... 
Yeah, it seems like Mephisto is uh, not one to really overextend. He's just playing it cool, collected, and slow here. And eventually, I guess he'll just... He thinks he'll whittle Loge down until he, well, dies. Yeah, you don't... You don't have to force things so much. Uh, you know, the school of... You know, the mana frenzy, the Mephisto mana frenzy, you, you let your opponent screw up and you win off of it, right? Like, he's not going to make a mistake. Loge might make a mistake eventually, you know, like... And with the Stormbringer things and everything, it's it's working out. That being said, Loge has the bridges right now. Or he Loge is one of the bridges. Getting, uh, has been getting some good hits, though, with his uh, Harbingers on the Boom Buggies and just one-shotting them. Uh multiple times here. Mephisto's yeah. probably not super happy about that. The Chain Lightning is also really good for this Mana Frenzy situation with a lot of these smaller ranged units Mephisto's playing. Yeah, that is true. I mean, I, I, mean, I feel I mean, Mephisto is under uh, 1000 HP right now and Loge is in the lead HP wise. I mean, and with this game, I mean, it doesn't really seem like either side has a, any sort of big advantage right now. No, there's, there's definitely not a, a clear winner here yet. Uh, 12 minutes in, by the way. The by, clock by the is way. ticking. If if Loge... Honestly, if Loge can manage to get out several Harbingers, if he can protect them a bit and get out enough of them, he, he could maybe pull this really... just pull this back. Uh, it's really hard, though, with the constant Stormbringer coming out. Yeah, it's, I mean, if Loge just had that really tanky, fat unit he could put in front, then this Harbinger could really be uh, giving him some momentum to push over and potentially win the game. But it does not really have much of that, except for maybe the defense, so that's not exactly a tank. Yeah, it's not, it's not the HP that you need in front. Now... It looks like Memphisto's finally getting a bit of an advantage here. One thing to mention though, I mean, Memphisto has like what? Like, yeah, doesn't have really any burn spells, right? For face, more or less? Uh, not, not many. The poison does very little damage. I believe it does damage, but like very reduced. That being said, we Loge see... dangerously low here. Yeah, Memphisto actually managed to get through there for a bit and start putting out damage. And Loge is in danger now. What I'm wondering though is, I mean, Loge has Chain Lightning and Fireball, correct? So if he just goes face with all of those time and time again, I mean, sure, he'll probably die if he just wastes mana on that too many times, but at this point, he probably could have uh, killed Mephisto already if he would have gone for a super smart strat like that, even though he might have died anyway. Uh, also, to correct myself from a minute ago, the poison does no damage to face at all. Um, yeah, I was. Uh, th I thought it. I thought it did very reduced. But yeah, I definitely want to see the Volko deck right now. Even the black hole to protect the Colossus and the Priestess. Oh, oh, okay. I I'm excited. Oh, the Volko. We do have the Volko. Ideally, he sideboarded the Colossus. It's not even in the list. Don't you dare say those words, sir. I will have no, no, I'm about to be broken-hearted. At least the Thelic is in, so uh, one out of two. Yeah, we do get the Thelic here. Did no opening up with the Stormbringer though. What's in his Stormbringer list here? It's a very standard Stormbringer list. Laser turret. Plus uh, some some buildings. Big fat Sentry dude, and uh, and others. Stone Busters, Daggerfall. Undying, no, God curse. I, I'm just not gonna say names anymore. Just cards, okay? Just, uh, just describe the cards. With you know, the nice graphics with that on it. Yeah. Here comes the large golem dude walking down. There's the the arcane lady. You know, uh, you got this. Large, large golem dude had a few too many McDonald's before joining the tournament. It's unfortunate, really. Volko, though, not really make a dent in that thing. He is pretty fat. Ooh, got that goal, though, on the... Slowly... Slowly getting hit by this golem. I feel like that massive hammer would do more damage. Like, he's pummeling him over and over again, but... Never mind. Pirates. 
Dino does have an XP lead here, not a major one, but slight one, and it does also have a slight HP lead. Well, fairly slight. Yeah, you know, 700, so it's a pretty okay HP lead. Slightly over average lead. And there's that marksmanship for his unit. It's gonna feel yeah, I mean, really good. Seems like Sinu is perhaps pulling a bit away here with uh, the XP lead and... Uh, ooh, not in time on the black hole there. Yeah, a little unfortunate for Shrivel, but... I mean, you have to basically preemptively black hole that, right? Because, I mean, there's almost... There's like there's no real way you can black hole after you see the effect of the dagger fall. No. Like, there's not even a split second of opportunity, you have to pay to do it. And uh, he was just a few milliseconds too late, unfortunately. But I haven't seen the Colossus, so uh, I don't know. Gonna be thinking he sideboarded the Colossus. Moment of Shoot. silence for Gnome, he was a, he was a good person. Yeah, well, okay, sure, well after this, after this game, I'm gonna have to take you out back and have some words with you, sir. Oh, man. That is some uh, some BM fireballs there, I see. Does not like uh, Sinus' uh, style, I guess. Fashion sense not in... Uh, uh, not to his liking. Well, there, he's getting fairly low, though. I mean, he's under half yeah, health. He's, he's taking a lot of damage. But Jesus, the XP lead. I mean, I know I said Sinus is pulling away, but now it's just like almost double. He's, he's pulled away at this point. He's gone. He's he's out. He went. I mean, I, I feel like Shrivel just said, you know what? I I, I just like playing my. Uh... Oh, uh... Didn't get you painted. That's game. Uh, Zinni takes it. Perfect timing. Pretty, on pretty decisive ball. game actually. Still had a lot of HP. Had a massive lead in XP. That was pretty pretty good. I mean, I, I Daggerfall. Like Shrivel... uh... Yeah. That Daggerfall is good against Selic. Who would have thought? Yeah, I, in a weird turn of events. In a weird turn of events, when you spend 10 mana for 6 Crystal Archers and uh, they die to a 3 mana Daggerfall, you kind of end up with an advantage. Um, I guess. It feels really bad. Well, I guess now I realize why Senior obviously played the Stormbringer here for the first game, because it's, it's his only deck with Daggerfall. No, second. No, yeah, his only re remaining available deck with Daggerfall. So I, since there's only so Th Thelic decks on Trivial's side, I imagine he's like, he's gonna play Thelic. I I'm gonna have my Daggerfall, and he's going to die horribly. Of and he course. did. Of course. Exactly that. Um, he has answers to the Thelic and some of his other decks too. I mean, and he has Fireball like sideboarded. Fireball is okay. It deals with the archers. True, but Daggerfall is you know, slightly more effective and. Uh, Daggerfall is definitely a bit bigger. Would agree, I, Daggerfall is it. I feel like Shrivel is just like, I, I just wanted to play my Thelic, man. I just wanted to get some archers on the on the ground, you know, on the play field, get them on the other side, shoot some towers. I just wanted to do something, you know? He just but, wants to have fun, man. Yeah, exactly. So he's, he wants to have fun in a video game. I mean, what's... What I mean, is I don't understand. fun? Exactly. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. If there are any... Baru subs in the chat, brew blank, please. Otherwise, we're into the second game already. That was fast. That is a uh, Aurelia skin of some sort. I don't know how I feel about it. Wait. It, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's a really weird. Is that her hair? Or is that like a, uh... a, a turban? I don't know. <laughs> I don't need, I don't know. I'm not, on this Mordar. I'm not sure, man. But Mordar, Mordar out here taking some steps. And this is the, oh, his only deck without Thelek, so... I mean, it depends what he sideboarded in here, but... I mean, I imagine it's gonna be Blue, Blue Golem or Cleaver as the tanky unit in here. Incubus in there as well, and Scotty. Yeah, I feel like the I feel, I feel like Shrivel has made his decks really heavy and like uh, just open ended, so he can just slot out some big units for more versatile cards as it feels like it. Didn't even see what the pop hit there. 
But, alas. Ah. Poor Scotty. He instantly cries here. Very, very yeah, depressing. Yeah, he's having a really sad day. This Cleaver is having a, a sad oh, day too. Actually, if he, get, he gets a second swing off, he does hit the warrior instead of the wolf. I, I mean, everyone is sad here, really. I mean, seeing I, I mean, Duke, same. A, to took a bit. I mean, I'm here casting Minimus tournament. You don't know how sad, sad I am, sir. Hey. <laughs> oh, never mind. That, but that was a secret. I shouldn't tell that publicly. No. Uh, I, I'm joking, of course, kind of. Mostly. But yeah, Sinu took uh, some early damage here, but uh, Shrivel has also taken some early damage, and Sinu is back in the HP lead. At this time, it is a very, very slight lead. Yeah, the XP being two for Sinu there, that's good for him. And now we have a five cost Howling Moon here. He plays that in the top side, so these wolves run right through. Interesting though that he plays it so that Scotty will instantly cry, but he'll be back up by the time the units reach him, so. Hmm. And that Howling Moon didn't actually work out super well for Zinio here, and the Tombstone's up for Shrivel with some really good targets here. I mean, it looks like and it's gonna be the Cleaver. Dino's actually playing Twins. It's like he didn't notice that, that they were nerfed and aren't that really that good anymore, I would say. What year is this? Uh, I mean, 2017, we, I think. We went back in time a bit. We have Zinio here playing the game, he's playing Twins. I mean, we definitely, this is a bit of a, a blast from the past. Yeah, this is uh, some retro tournament gameplay, which, which I also enjoy. That that's a good good rest as well, by the way. Good Absolutely. Value. And he's set up you for another it? good rest here. How how did both players lose so much HP? Am I not following what was happening on the screen? Uh, I I don't know if you are looking at the screen. Uh, you see that when they play minions, they go to the other side of the field, they hit the tower, and they take damage. You know. Ah, um, I see. there's I been a lot of that happening. That, that that that's what I didn't get before. Okay, not, now uh, I understand. Okay. Well, happy to help. Happy to help. Thank you, apples. You're a real lifesaver. Of course. Sinu under a thousand HP here. Shivel slightly above. Sinu again having a pretty divisive XP lead. Like he's he's not joking around. No, the XP lead is definitely real, and uh, with Nervir coming out, you know, it could be really good for him. Oh yeah, that is a, that is a good point. That is a nasty, nasty uh, dragon. Unless you have Stun Lancers, which just makes it useless. But uh, Shivel does not. Sinu's getting really, Sinu's really low here. taking so he much fight. damage. He's a lot. Wait, does uh, Shivel have any burn spells? Mm -hmm. Yes, no? I don't believe no. so. I haven't seen any. He no, does no. have two succubus coming through. But it's gonna succubus is gonna die. Cleaver is on the way. Needs to, to tank these things here. I mean, he is he is keeping the things off face, and Nerver is uh, on Shrivel's face, and uh, he's he, he she it is mad. Is burning away. Really good use of Howling Moon there from Zinyu as well to uh, retarget Nervir onto that Scott to, to deal with it so he doesn't just die to it. Make it cry immediately as well. Yeah, the, so. the making it cry so it uh, it aggroes Nervir. I really like that. And and that does it. Nervir wins the game for Zinyu here. He ends up taking down Shrivel. It was a little dicey for a minute there. He was under a lot of pressure though. I do feel like both players will start maybe with Apep here though, because I just feel Apep is so strong, especially when you have presence in him. Give me those and oh, look, it's Apep. Oh, is, is it Apep? There's an Apep. Uh, there's only one Apep. I guess Dirian is above the Apep. He, uh, he Dirian doesn't Volko. need the Apep, you know, he's here with the Volko instead. He, the real manly man of Masters. Of course, uh, Dirian is is a definitely in the Manly Man Masters Club. Got a decent push up top here, but it's probably going to be deflected, I imagine. Yeah, these uh, these flightless dragon is going to do a really good job of killing this cleaver, no problem. And uh, Apex just going to going to spit away. Just going to keep on spitting. He ends up taking, you know, a little bit over 200 damage, but that's not its not really a problem. Especially for Apep, 200 damage isn't that scary. 
And uh, he did get a... What? What's that card? With the... What? God, uh, names. names. That's the thing. Names. Name. Present card, anyway. Played present, and uh, he got that thingy with wings on it. I don't know. <laughs> that thingy with wings on it. He does have some 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 wing. Um, I believe. I also don't know his name. <laughs> he got that card at least. Okay, chat. <coughs> so he got a. Uh, <clears throat> I'll I'll look over the tooltip in a second here, chat. So don't you worry. Uh, I believe okay. it is. Uh, it is in fact. Uh, Harold Amun. Is that, Slithering is that the... summons. Slither spell. Okay, summon so a living statue, prowler, or soul stealer. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. So he got. That, he got that... Harold Amun. Come on. <laughs> fancy, fancy boy flyer. You know, really good wing. Yep. Definitely. So uh, anyway. that's what he got from the present. So good, good. Yes. Value yep. information. And he did yep. get the. Uh, the oh my god I don't even remember the names of those critters on the ground three of them they split if you want to you know got for free first bird <laughs> oh god okay no are you okay no, no I, uh, I my brain is melted I don't know what to say oh that's big from Dirian there actually killing off those whelps protecting his cleaver he's getting multiple that is hits huge. look at this damage coming through that's insane actually really well done by him. To Dirin, secure that that extra damage. Dirin also does really play a solid uh, aggro vocal usually. Menace with that master. Honestly, really honestly, Dirian is just one of the most well-rounded players in the game. I think I think he's really capable of playing a, a bit of a longer style when needed. But he's also very good at playing aggro when when necessary. You know, he's definitely um, definitely well-rounded. You know, very capable of playing to the matchup. Definitely, definitely. The fans are here getting some value from uh, from Locker or Jacko 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 Jacko, Jacko whatever. Long Jacko name. Jacko John John. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, yeah, locked. But he I mean, he's very low on health now. I mean, a thousand HP less than Dirian, and uh, I mean he's not ahead in uh, XP, which uh, I don't know how to feel about. I mean, as an APEP, you want the value here. You want to get your your free minions and your, your cheap minions as early as possible. But if he doesn't get his third perk soon, then I don't think he's gonna have an ability to win. Plus these pings. Oof. Yeah, real damage coming out at 300 health. It's it's very scary for him at this point. He only needs to be hit by by a few of these afterburners, and he'll die. Um, and you, you have to be careful. I mean, as APEP, you do have the, the invulnerability totem. Uh, but the issue is, once that time's out, you know, if Durian has saved a, a hand of burn cards and he uses exactly. them with Afterburner, it's it's all over. I mean, even with the balanced uh, totem here, he's not going to be able to, to defend against this continuous barrage of just ping, 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 dead. And way out right now... For, uh, for locked here. Right now, I, I looks and feels like Dirian's just trying to get control of this bridge and then dump his hand and, and kill the Apep while the totem's down. Um, the totem will be back now. Yeah, there it is. Uh, but as soon as it goes down, if he doesn't have that bridge, he's he's going to die. I mean, we're looking at, at a lot of mana and several burn cards, and there it is, just like that. Yeah, just in time for Locke to get his uh, free Tranquil Shtihu, but not enough to win the game. And uh, a happy victory for, for Durian here. I feel like Durian is exactly like Wolko when he wins. You know, he just puts his hammer over his shoulder. It's like, yeah, I won. It's a, it's a red golem, not a hammer, though. Durian just picks up a red golem and, and puts it over his shoulder like that's my match, you know? That that's also sounds realistic. I'm sure he yeah. has some major biceps. Just like, take that uh, old red golem, activate it or I not. I feel like Durian lifts. And we're going to have a few moments here for the players to sideboard, and then we'll be getting into the next one. What do you think Dirian's going to play next now that he's out the Volko and the Milloween's band? Do you think we'll look at an APEP, or he'll just go with the Setsu? Since, I just, since as I've said, I think APEP is one of the most 
uh, quote unquote balance the masters in the game, I would just play him as early as possible, or at least that I mean at least now for Diren, now they only has the Setsu or the Apep to pick between. I would just do the Apep. Yeah, at the same time, I do really want to see the Red Golem, and perhaps Diren thinks I'm gonna play the Red Golem. I will already have one win. I might as well, might as well play it. I'm not like in a in a rush to to close out the series. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's it's not just about the Red Golem either. I think it's about the Setsu. And I think Dirian is uh, a very consistent Setsu player, a very good Setsu player. And Setsu is also a very I mean, solid master of roles. Not like she's weak, mm -hmm. to say the least. Oh, ab absolutely. Setsu is definitely a strong master. Uh, especially, I, I feel, in a competitive environment like this, Setsu is. Yeah, and this is uh, fairly. Big fairly cheap set to as well plus you can't just sideboard in a shock rock or a dagger fall plasma marines or illo cleaver or whatever else you can make it a really cheap cycle set to if you if you so wish it mm -hmm. absolutely there's there's definitely options which I is one like of the nice maybe... things about the sideboard uh style here Let's go. indeed i feel like lock maybe go for a set to as well but maybe not guess we'll see And Dirian is on his Setsu. So we should see a Red Golem here. If not, that will also be a ban. And I have to take him with the Colossus that we missed out on. And a Herald uh, Moon. Y yes, these names for these cards in the present for uh, for Locked. Are we, are we learning names? I am uh, reading tooltips and learning. So... Uh, Shout out nice. to uh, to Gnome really quickly, who's putting in the effort. He's learning some names. I'm studying while commentating. I'm a great multitasker. For some of the older MM players like Gnome, you know, these new cards can really throw you off. Is it, when I was young, you see, we didn't have these fancy named cards. We just had like a cleaver. Right? Back in my day, well, we team. had living statue and we liked it. Exactly. That was it. Right? It was just living statue and plasma mer. Uh, you not that we didn't know this card. Oh, yo, look at this man. Yeah, exactly. That that card that I just said the name of, but can't remember without the tool. Herald of the Moon? He's not played. He is yeah. a he is a whip. He is, uh... Yeah. Sort of the BDSM card in the game. One of the coolest cards. I, I think my second favorite card after Nervier. At least, like, design. Like, just the look of him. Look at him whip. Watch Might him suspect. whip. Watch him whip some fools. Into submission probably as well at that point. All right, but, no, uh, this is uh, this is a family-friendly broadcast. I need you to calm down. But that is family-friendly, I think. Anyhow, <laughs> at least in my family, okay. Oh. <laughs> oh <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I didn't know you were from <laughs> Alabama, no. That's pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. That that's it. Sorry to uh, break it to you, but the Durian is at least having a pretty good start here. Once yeah, again, uh, off to a really good start. Sort of giving, uh, giving Locked a, a hard time. I uh, I feel like we're gonna see a very similar thing to last game. Gyrion just puts down this pressure early, and then by the time Locked has the invulnerability totem, it doesn't do enough. It it, it can't be up permanently, and as soon as it's down, Gyrion's just gonna, you know, take advantage. He's gonna shove it in, and win the game, uh, and uh, honestly. Even I mean, if you're gonna play an ape up here and uh, you're gonna have the totem up a lot, you need to just have a really, really cheap cycle, and the uh, locked cycle is not that bad. Yeah, his cycle is not that fast. He's not he's not controlling the bridges very well. His his units are losing out, and he can't control bridges either. And once and, uh, Tyrion gets uh, gets third perk here, that's gonna be be rough for. Uh, Lock to to deal with, I think. And if I mean, if Lock even gets in in a push and gets there in under fifteen hundred, it's not gonna help him either. I would say. Yeah. Assuming he has Red Golem anyway. Honestly, just uh, looking pretty scary. Also, Dirian uh, doesn't have the Red Golem. Uh, I, I heard you mention the Red Golem there. He he doesn't have the Red Golem. He hasn't had the Red Golem. Um, every time, every he's, time. He's gonna hit perk three. Um, he's he's most likely, unless Locke figures out a, a way to deal with this, a, a better way than he's been dealing. 
Uh, Darian is, is definitely looking like he has the, the big advantage here and he can he can probably win this game. Uh, yeah. But Darian he is... hasn't won our hearts because he doesn't have the red golem. Uh... Well, definitely. he's uh, From a moral standpoint, he's uh, very low right now. That red, red golem removal really hurt his uh, chances of winning the uh, public vote. Yeah, he's... But he, he'll still probably win the game at this point if he keeps going like this. Yeah, but is it is it really a win? I, I wouldn't say so, but I guess but the it, admins it's will. gonna be it's gonna be a W for the for the sake of the tournament. He's putting in that pressure, and you, here it is. And locked is below 500, and the totem just doesn't last long enough to protect him. Full time. He doesn't even have it in in hand yet. He needs to. He'll have it in hand now in a few seconds. But even then, I mean, he's he's not even at his third perk yet. And he's not getting value from his uh, present. Like he's had this Herald uh, a Moon in his hand for a long, long time, and he just hasn't really played it. So the the present that he played hasn't gotten him almost any value at all. Well, now and that's that's a bit of a misplay from Locke there. That ends up with Darian taking the game. Um, kind of a common mistake uh, against Setsu, I think. A lot of uh, a lot of Apeps. At least the first couple times until they figure it out, they they make a very similar mistake there. You place the totem opposite of the setsu in in the path of the third shot, the stun, uh, stun shot, the third perk stun, and oh, yeah. it, it gets stunned and then you die. Players have banned Milloween, and uh, we'll be getting a clean start. And I mean, this is what it should have been no long. Milloween is banned, and now the fun can actually begin. Do you think that this will turn out any different, though, than the last time, considering Milloween is no longer in the cards for either player? Uh, I think think it'll be... I, I definitely feel like it'll be different. I mean, and not having Milloween as an option, we're, we're not going to see the, the same matchup, clearly. Um, I, I don't know if it's really sided one way or the other. I do just know. Feel, uh, do you think it's going to be a APEP versus APEP now instead? <laughs> Apep versus Apep. Uh, it could be. We could see. We could see Apep versus Apep. Um, I feel like Darian we... might go Apep uh, as as he did Milloween uh, last time. And then what if Ace we? Still what if we just see a Setsu mirror matchup? I don't know. What I if mean, we yeah. see Volko versus Apep? <laughs> we, we might. We might. And that's exactly what we see, actually. Okay, we see so, Darian's uh... Volko and the Acer's Apep. Acer might be a bit uh, triggered by the last game. And it's like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to play the second best thing to my Milloween, my Apep, and I'm going to make you cry. Or and something along those lines. Interesting that he has the uh, the Banner Man in his Apep. Not really a card I see too much in competitive play. We got three disruptor puffs as well. That those could be useful. Move forward at least. I have no clue if he's actually talking or not. Sorry. He's having quick little technical difficulty. I see, because I, I always get scared if Discord is just being mean to me so I can't hear you. So you're no, just no. So talking over each other. Or, or no, like, we were, we were okay. Silence. Okay. Well, no, I, I just had a uh, moment there. Um, it happens. But, it happens. Yeah, well, uh, we're, so Acer we're here. I'm good. Here, which I'm guessing is to protect the sniper potentially, and other units he might get from from his perk or or otherwise RNG cards. He did play his present, didn't he? But I missed what he got. Yeah, I also missed that. Like I said, I was having some technical difficulties for a minute there. And... But at least. At least Acer can be a bit smug and play those disruptor puffs and be like, what's she gonna do? <laughs> Gotta feel good. Gotta feel good to get those puffs out there. Do some like, disrupting. Shock rock there on the... Uh, yeah, I, I was gonna say, Deerian probably did not aim uh, that one properly. 
Just face fall a bit there. Not These think too major though. though. Only a few mana. Perfect Batman placement there to protect against the Daggerfall. Batman is a card you can place basically exactly in time if you see the Daggerfall uh, effect. Acer already under half health there, and Deeran also not really too healthy himself. XP is in Acer's favor for a change, but not by too much, like 15 or so. I mean, this Bounty Sniper can definitely, uh, another great Bannerman placement here. Bounty Sniper can definitely give uh, Acer some XP. I mean, it's gotten him a decent bit already, another XP. I mean, if uh, the Sniper here keeps going, Acer's gonna get this third perk in no time. Yeah, it's honestly, there's, there's a good bit of XP from it. Bounty Sniper is a really great card, really do like it. I uh, I feel like unlike some of the, the last series we saw where the, the Apep was taking too much damage and couldn't sustain like even with the totem, I think Acer is actually managing to keep his HP high enough that he can't just be killed off as soon as the, the totem goes down, uh, which and is really good. Also just, just, it is pretty good. I know, Especially I with the XP. That, uh, the card that Acer got from his present was the Sniper, normal Sniper, which is a pretty good uh, good RNG card to get when you have the Bannerman already. Because then you can just protect your Bounty Sniper and normal Sniper with that card. And he's already baited out a few Daggerfalls with it, so he's probably feeling good about that. But this Cleaver might hurt. Well, never mind, Totem. For forget <laughs> what I said, chat. Forget what I said. It's okay. It happens. It happens Third to perk. the best of us. Perk has been reached for for Acer, and again, I didn't see what he got. Am, am I blind? I don't. I don't know anymore. I. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You might be. Well, the car will come back into rotation at some point. Darian and Acer both not too healthy here. I mean, Darian's gonna get his third perk soonish, but walk a third perk is not exactly the strongest in the game. But still, it'll make the cleaver hurt and the wild hurt. It was uh, stun lancers that he got. That is that's... a really good RNG card. Yeah, that's gonna feel really good. Um, you know, Acer Acer has found a loophole. He's playing with wild cards actually. Is I mean yeah. that's I mean every tournament they have at least five six cheaters like playing with wild cards every time. I, I don't I mean, know. If you that. you play Apep, you cheat. You know, it's it's that simple. Wise words from a uh, from a wise apple. And uh, honestly, at this point, Acer is in a really good spot. He's taking over this game. Uh, I mean, Even he's already been taking it over, but. But these pings, though. I mean, if Deer can get a good uh, good few salos in after this totem is is gone, plus the dagger pull and shock. And it, that no, that's that's it. That's definitely oh. that's the game right there. Just like that. Uh, Acer from a position of power to, to quickly dying because the power of Volko there, you know? Environment. I, I, I definitely feel like Volko is one of the better matchups where an APEP but once he has the uh, the totem. You just have the continual barrage of uh, DPS, which uh, can just end that a game if an APEP is low, but just outside of uh, that range for a, for a single small push or, or a burn spell. Yeah. So, uh, thankfully, or not if you're Acer, I guess, but uh, thankfully for Darian, he does t take that first game. But we could see another APEP from Acer if he so wishes. I'm not sure he wants to play another uh, another APEP game, though. I, I don't know. Um, the thing is, I, I don't feel like... I can't get a really good... But um, he was pretty strong, and he got really good, good RNG there. cards and still lost. Um, I mean, I do feel like when you get pretty good RNG cards and you're basically basically cheating and you still don't win the game, it's probably okay to be like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna change decks, I'm gonna change masters, try something else. Not cheating hard enough, you know. Or, or, of course, you can just cheat, as long as you want to, really. It's up to them. <laughs> but I wouldn't mind seeing... Oh yeah, sideboards, that's a good 
question. I mean, we have looked over the inside board maybe once before. Let's quickly go over it again. Blast Master in here, Cleaver in here, Shock Rock, uh, Daggerfall, and uh, Illo Cleaver, Stint, and all that. A lot of versatile cards in there. Acer has uh, also, I mean, Acer has a really good side, but I would say he has the Screaming Scratch, Illo Cleaver for cheap uh, vers versatility there. Black Hole, one of the best cards in the game, which I will stand by forever. Love that card. Uh, some like a whelp and uh, the combo of the stun lancers and the defense cell stun all the way and the meme storm as well in the sideboard here for for Acer. Wonder what it's gonna what it's gonna do with that. Interested to see loading into another game. It seems like I am excited. Please no more Apep. Please no more Apep. And please. Eh. <laughs> no. Not I. <clears throat> Okay. No. I quit. I swear. Okay, that. Okay. Well, I guess the players don't like me, which is okay. Which is okay. So this is probably going to be a double present a pep here. Wonder if some sideboard was put in or not. Zeppelin. Was wasn't it? Was it? Wait. I I, I mean I I don't know what I'm seeing anymore. Acer does have the uh, jungle jumble in his makeup as well, so we'll see what he gets out of that. A lot of possibility for uh, possibilities for wild cards in this game. A wheel from from Darian. Does he have that in his base Apep uh, deck? He does. Wheel is always a fun card. I do quite like that one. Nice effect, yeah. and uh, yeah, when it came into the game, I was like, oh yeah, that's good. I I loved wheel. Uh, when it was first added, it was kind of like instantly my favorite spell, actually. Uh, like yeah, Wheel and Beam of Doom are, are pretty much my favorite spells. Uh, be beam is still forever favorite. Yeah, Acer Beam is up, uh... Beam is babe. Oh wow, that's a, uh, a, a healthy boy. A discounted red golem for uh, Acer here from his jungle jumble. And they oh. discounted a healing fireball. He also got the... Uh, the, the skeleton thingy names, yes, from it as well, I believe. Or is that something else? But yeah, at least the eight mana red golem here can be interesting, especially in a di in uh, cooperation with the and uh, his HP is already in the the right spot for this red golem too. He's hit the threshold already. And um, Darian with the plow champ emote right there, he, he knows. A yeah, red Darian. golem. Darian's got to be happy to see the golem out there, though. I mean, this is, you know, that's him. That's a red red golem is Darian's card, you know? He might think that, you know, how dare this poster do this, but uh, I don't know. Okay, so future present from Acer, he got a free Zeppelin Bomber, and then he got the free uh, uh, Skeleton Boy up there for his uh, first perk. This is a massive push. This red golem has this... so much HP. There's a there's a sniper to support it. The the bombers the... coming in. This is a lot of DPS. Shield plays down, but uh, it's not gonna last too long. Takes out the bomber though, and red golem also go down. So not enough HP on that big boy. Needed a bit more. But another red golem is ready in hand for Acer. And here and it is. Play. Oh. And this third discounted card for Acer from the Jungle Jumble was the Shock Rock, another good great versatile card. He's probably happy with those. Acer has lost a lot of HP though, he's almost at a thousand, uh, and he's uh, not close to perk 3 either. Therian is a bit ahead in XP here, swimming HP. Yeah, a nice little XP and HP lead for Therian, but Acer definitely not in a bad spot. This game is pretty far from over. The healing fireball yeah. comes out. These shrimper, the flightless dragons are murdering this red golem though. It's taking so much damage oh, yeah, so quickly. It does melt. Wait, do you know what the uh, free card Therian has gotten? I haven't. Uh, uh, Therian, Therian got scrap pack for his first card. He did he have present in his deck or did he take it out? Uh, don't think after. At least no red golem for Darien, I suppose. And with the greater gift of the Serpent God, the perk 3, he just got shielded across the dudes. Ah, uh, that is a... Well, I mean, it's not a bad card versus the red golem. 
will make him swing a lot. And those, uh, his uh, auto attack is really quick anyway. Defense are also a good Dude, card look here. At all these, is, uh, look at all these units out here just melting with Golem. But look, look at the bounty snipers, like ping ping, more XP, ping ping. Yeah, yeah, and the, the XP lead that Darian did have is gone now. Uh, Acer's got back yeah, into both it. Both players, uh, both players at 135, 140-ish, both having their third perks already. And of course I did miss what the third perk was for both players, but next rotation I will see. Acer taking yeah, a good bit of damage. I mean, when you wheel face, that is like showing dominance, I feel. Yeah, but they're I really asserting dominance. Or Acer, that's a good, uh, good free card for the third perk. Good to the DPS. I mean, this is like an endless war of uh, ice shield, no ice shield. This is the big, you know, a lot of units coming through again. There's the wheel blocked with the red golem. Really well done by Acer. That's the one reason why I stopped playing wheel after a few weeks when once it came out because everyone just blocked it they, because they had ample time. Any uh, new yeah. player would be able to, and, to block it if they had any minions in their hand. And and like, also at the time it came out, right, Divine Warrior was in literally every deck. So like everybody had but, yeah. a card to block it. Yeah, no that was uh, not fun as well. That was, a, that was at least a good wheel, not being blocked there on top lane, just wiping out the Vine Sniper and, and everything else that was on top lane. And the Red Bell on bottom lane here though, with the Assassin support, is a bit scary. With Drone as well, or Aimbot. Yeah, it, has it, a, it does have some support. Not... We'll see, Darian's done a really good job of, of managing these golems so far. Um, of course, being a, a huge red golem player, he knows how people deal with it as well. You know, he's, he's had people deal yeah, with it he when he plays it. Um, nice up there to the bounty sniper. I don't know, I, mean, I, I, I don't know how I feel about Acer playing another red golem at the furthest back when he had a push going on bottom lane there. I mean, I feel like maybe could have supported more and maybe gone for a, for a like big push, but I guess he knows that the Ape of Shield is here and balanced, so probably wouldn't get anything out of it anyway. Yeah, and uh, also like I mean I think he's just trying to, to get the bounty sniper out there like in the back too, just really playing the the slower safer game. He didn't and want to commit a lot to the push, and there's Mana Frenzy, yeah. For Acer there, Darian very close, but still fine. Really value away. healing ball. But now, now it's going to be rough for Darian, I feel, because Bounty Snipers, he doesn't have bridges, shield's about to break, oh, yeah. two, three red golems on the field, not Bounty DPS. Sniper, Bounty Snipers, oh man, and there, there it is, it shows that it's over. Yeah. I'd say Bounty Sniper yeah. is probably one of the strongest cards in Mana Frenzy. Um, Especially weird. after it was buffed to give XP when it hits uh, Tower as well, not just uh, minions. That was a, I mean, it was a close game overall, I suppose, but Acer in the end there definitely had a major advantage. His RNG cards were quite good. I mean, when you get an eight mana Red Golem, you're like, okay, not bad. Then, then you get two mana Healing Fireball. It's like, oh, that's, that's synergy. I like it. <laughs> the the combination. Then you, get one, then you get a one mana Shock Rock. It's like, I can work with this. Okay, it's good. It's good. So one Apep did Apep harder that game. But, uh, you know, also a free assassin, pretty good uh, third perk uh, card there. Good game from both of us, though. Fairly close and ended up uh, going to Mana Frenzy, which happens a lot in tournaments, really. Not too many times in uh, pub games, though, I feel. Yeah, uh, I mean, in, in the tournament play, these really good players against each other, it definitely happens more often than on ladder. Both also players are more incentivized to sort of drag games out and not just, you know, forfeit because they don't want to play 10 minutes. <laughs> so now that uh, one APEP is out, what do you think uh, Acer will, uh, will will go with? Or wait, have you played one game or no? Yeah, one game. Okay. Mm -hmm. huh. Getting confused because we, we we did the match. I was like, how many games have we played? <laughs> it's but okay, uh, it's but a... yeah, so how uh, how do you think Acer will uh, will switch up now when he has his uh, two remaining options and, and the sideboard there? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see the the Setsu come out probably. Um, I feel like Setsu's 
really consistent. Uh, and, and there it is, actually. It is the set two. Excellent. Uh, we see the, the APEP Furion, of course, again, which is going to be really... I wonder what he's going to get this time. If he'll get cards he feels happier with, or... I wonder what, if he did the sideboard anything in his setsu. Board units at all yet, so might not have switched anything. I did have Fellow's Cats in there. So, it seems to be a really cheap uh, setsu deck, which is a, is a good choice. I mean, who doesn't like cheap cycle setsu? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of the cycle set too. I like it. I mean, I like I like all forms of sets, just in general. Really, a great master. I mean, yeah, Setsu is a uh, it is a beaut. A uh, you know something. I was gonna make a joke, but I forgot the joke halfway through because. Nah. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> nice, nice joke that you had there. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I'll laugh for you, so you can feel good about Thank it you. anyway. I, yeah, I got you. Um. Once get rid of stun lancers here. Yeah, just I, I mean honestly, I it's just a typical early game. This just a little bit of back and forth for the bridges here, and nothing really interesting's happened. I mean, Deering's taken a, a pretty decent chunk of damage. Um, Took a full clip there, plus the jump damage. Yeah, he's he's down 700. Acer's down about 400. So just a, a little bit of early trading. Well, what was the free card for Deering? Uh, let me. Take a moment for him to cycle back to it. Ah, Paying yes. attention. Oh, okay. 101. Did Darian have his present or uh, jumble? I, jumble I have not seen deck. it, no. Uh, his free card was the, the Haunting Hugger. Ah, right, right. I thought so. I should have noticed. Yeah. Yeah, noticed. I was like, that's not in the sideboard, is it? No, nah, it's, uh, it's his, his perk card. These crossbow dudes also a. Uh... No, it does just have them there. Okay. I mean, Setsu here is, just keeps jumping on face and getting a full clip off before dying, and that that hurts. I mean, Darian is going to be perk 2 now in a second, but still, he's lost half HP early on here. Yeah, he has lost a lot of HP early. Um, you can afford to trade some HP, though, as, as APEP. Uh, still, though, with I the mean, perk two, but it's a bit... you have to walk Setsu the line. You start getting into the danger zone when you're getting like 1500 and, and below, especially where it's a Setsu. Like, mm -hmm. again, they're gonna jump again here. Obviously, this time he has shield in hand, so not gonna really do anything. But uh, still, the continuous pressure, Deering can't be super comfortable with the position he currently has where it's a Setsu. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not the most comfortable position. Um, honestly, I, I feel like once he stabilizes a bit, he'll be okay though. Uh... Yeah, I mean, what I'm thinking, for, what I'm worried about here and here is that once Acer does get third perk, and ha we have a laser, and we have uh, all these cheap spells that Acer has uh, in hand, then the Totem is going to not do too much, because it's going to be stunned with a shock rock, or just going to be deleted by other spells or minions, and Deeran can easily just be dps down in a few jumps. Yeah, that's, that's very fair. That is definitely something uh, to watch out for. Deering just like just like wheel everything there, including his own uh, own minion. Wanted to set out of the way. Back to the tower. No mercy. And XP is surprisingly even for, for both players here. There's Acer that has a pretty good uh, HP lead. Yeah. It's really just the HP lead, um, which hasn't grown much uh, since Gyrion got the totem. Probably won't until Setsu perk 3 is, is active. Um, what do you think is more valuable here though? Do you think that Setsu perk 3 is more valuable or do you think that Apex perk 3 is more valuable in this kind of matchup? Now, <laughs> honestly, I I feel like Setsu perk 3 in general, um, there is there is of course the chance that, that Gyrion high rolls into something. Uh, like if he high rolls, he gets a really amazing card for for his perk three. It it could even out. In general, I I think Setsu perk three is maybe the best perk three in the game, uh, or strongest like like individual perk three. I mean, uh, Nervir for Morelia of course is up there. Uh, Golem, Milloween, probably better actually. 
Like I, it's it's definitely like in the in the top though, right? And I I feel like it's consistency. Um, it'll definitely. And now that Acer has it, well, Deering just hit Perk three as well. Uh, did he get stun lancers? No. Yeah, it was stun lancers. Well, that is a not a super That's... high roll, but not bad. I'm. Yeah, against um, the Setsu, it's it's probably pretty good. I mean, this is where Setsu shines, though, and th this is why a lot of people, including myself, really love the perk Setsu build or like cheap cycle Setsu. Just you can cycle to your jump so quickly, you can just jump, and then you get you can do a jump back, and you immediately jump back again, right? This sort of yeah. endless barrage of, of laser beams. Acer though, not really jumping on face at the moment, playing a bit more defensively it seems, so it fast few jumps. Again jumping on bridge. That stun lancer though, gets some value, even though everything dies with wheel anyway. Out there, didn't get too much done, took out a few shields off those crossbow dudes, but, well, but nothing. I mean, Acer has a very slight XP lead, but... I mean, this seems like Genos can just go with Frenzy, because Acer is not pushing face here, and Darian is not really breaking through onto Acer's face either, plus even if Darian does, he ha Acer has a good amount of HP more than uh, Darian, so he can take a few hits and still be in a good position. Yeah. Darian is playing the totem for cycle, I guess, which might mean that Acer elects to jump on face this next time. Man, I don't know how fast Darian cycle is, but his deck isn't that heavy, is it? No, it's it's not very heavy. It was a pretty good cycle. Um, yeah, I think it's it's good enough. I honestly. Just... It seems like Acer here elects is electing just jump on bridge again and again and again to potentially just keep bridge control, get an XP lead, get frenzy first, maybe. He's at least not, I mean, he hasn't jumped on face for, for a while. Like, I can't even remember the last time he jumped on face. Basically in, yeah, in he like hasn't, four minutes. He hasn't, he just hasn't been making that uh, aggressive yeah, another, jump. Another just on the bridge there, I mean, does play the shock rock uh, without needing it. it. XP is just, even with Acer jumping so aggressively onto the bridges to, I imagine, keep them, he's still not really much ahead in XP at all, only a few XP here, no. and even even if he reaches Mana Frenzy first here, it's gonna be only by a few seconds, which doesn't really matter too much. And dead even on XP now. And again, just back on the bridge. Keep the bridge. Yeah. Quick wheel to deal with that. That's still a 2 versus 4 mana though, uh, trade. So, Darian not getting the best end of that deal. And, and there's mana, mana Frenzy. And Mana for Frenzy Racer. Players. So now the real fun begins. Get ready for another 10 minutes of gameplay, people. <laughs> I do feel this match can go on for a while though, especially if Acer is not going to be aggressive with his with Setsu jumps. Then again, Acer has lost this amount of HP here and Sunlight to be targeted. This Acer is losing a lot. Acer is losing a lot of HP here. He's definitely not in the lead here. I'd say he's, he's at the uh, disadvantage here. His uh, his ploy to keep the bridges with the Setsu jumps repeatedly has not. Uh, winning position at all so far at least yeah it feels maybe like he was playing to not lose more than playing to win um you, know, you, you take a like a safer well. try to, to keep yourself in the game route instead of trying to win and uh it, it looks honestly it feels like it's really costing him now like he played to keep himself in the game and try to to just not lose and at this point Darian just you it's almost impossible for for yeah, Acer I mean, to actually you're playing, keep up. You're playing playing against an apep which has, you know, at Frenzy, and Apep is going to outvalue you at basically every turn. And no matter how valuable your jump is, as you can see here, it's not enough to just turn tight of a, of a whole game. If you yeah. don't have the, have, have an advantage. 
I feel like that game was definitely, as you said, uh, Acer might have been playing not to lose versus uh, playing to. Masters, not super surprised. Um, the fight is on. My not shockingly good. Huh. And the diddle into the game. So it's a Rappo versus Stormbringer opening match up here, but the person on the Stormbringer is not Memphisto. So Memphisto is opening with his Rappo again, which he did in an earlier matchup as well, though I forgot who it was against. Are you with me, Apples? I am live over here. there. Yeah. Okay. I'm here. Sorry. I am here. I am live. I uh, I I think I was lagging actually for a minute there. My my game was uh, really really laggy for a minute there. My spectate when I opened it. Um. It's a perfectly optimized game. Don't. <clears throat> yes. 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 Um. Anyway, I I missed what you said. Um. What you're talking about? I, I assume you're talking oh, about how great Boom Buggy is, and how we're getting to see them this yeah. as Boom Buggy again. Definitely what I was saying, okay. as well. And uh, yeah, so we have both Boom Buggy and Scrat Scratillery for Mephisto. So a lot of a lot of uh, missiles being launched here today. Yeah, we like our missiles here. That is true. As a proud uh, Pake American, I concur course. See news uh, Stormbring deck, I actually haven't looked at it, but uh, it seems to be a, it's the cannon roller in here, unless you put it out, it's a cleaver, boom buggy as well, other range min minions. Seems fairly standard. Cannon roller is a bit unorthodox though, perhaps. Yeah, cannon roller not a super common card, not something to see very often. I mean, he might have taken it out as well. I haven't seen it yet on the board, so I he might have believe he did. It. It's like I, I might I put it in the deck, but that was just for show. I'm not actually going to play it. I Jokes. mean, it could be matchup dependent. You know, there could be matchups where he really likes it. Yeah, but worst for example, Darian's Golem. It's like ping, 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 and then mm -hmm. quite a lot Another... of damage. Hey, I mean, here comes the signature or Mephisto statue boom buggy push. There we go. So bottom lane, we go, here we go again. And Pistol lost like 600 HP or so, so far, but nothing too much. And here's his he laser. The laser cannon just eating this living statue. And that is a, that is a very nice uh, card to have against these big tanks. It means that Mephisto is not going to have the, have the same success in this matchup as it did versus uh, the person he played before that could not deal with the tank. Yeah, he'll definitely have yes, to work harder to, to find that kind of play. So, Senior is, I mean, he is ahead, both in terms of XP and HP, but nothing that is major in any way that would warrant uh, any sort of uh, worry from Mephisto either. I and mean, Mephisto can easily, easily bring this back to his advantage. Already almost four minutes in, and nothing too much has happened. Just each side, as you mentioned before, you know, at the beginning of every game, or in this case, four minutes into the game. Just trading blow for blow, nothing too major happening on either side, which is fine. I mean, I'm, I'm expecting to go into mana frenzy before this game actually starts. Yeah. Of course. We, we are seeing Mephisto, you know, so I wouldn't really expect anything else. I do wonder though if Mephisto is going to try to go for any more sort of big pushes with the statue and the boom buggy or if he just thinks, nah, I'm not going to try that when I know he has laser turret. There's a Docker now though, which could maybe warn trying to make that push again and just make sure the Docker hits the laser turret. Yeah. So you can block Docker if you're very quick on the on the W key or whatever key you have a minion I... on. I would say, yeah, Daka's, Daka's pretty blockable in general. Um, 
Especially when you know the enemy probably is hovering over it. And these players, we wish I have been there for a while and they're both... Uh, both uh, some of the best and the cream of the crop in different shapes and forms. They should know how and when to, to block. Yeah, these, but, these are definitely players that know what they can block and know how to block these things. Um, and man, just like yeah. that, Zinyu, Zinyu manages to deal with the buggy. Um, Memphisto dealt with the laser cannon. That's just hurting a bit here though, getting like 3-4 auto attacks and we're going down. This artillery is being quite effective versus the laser turret and, and other things as well, but definitely versus the laser turret it's been played multiple times here to just uh, delete it from the game uh, fairly effectively. So there is like yeah, a team manager, right? So. And so um, I just realized both players here are well over third perk already. So uh, mm -hmm. obviously Stormbring is going to take the edge here in the third perk uh, value territory. I still think that Rathbos third perk is horribly weak, but it can at least absorb some uh, Stormbringer things, which is something. Yeah, I, I don't think Rappo perk 3 is horrible. Um, I think it's okay. Stormbringer perk 3, though, is definitely stronger, uh, at least in this matchup especially, I feel, because it kind of just deals with it all so well. Um, also considering that Cena doesn't really have any big sort of cleaver-esque minions, the Rathbow uh, strats aren't really gonna block too much. Yeah. And uh, Zinio has built up a bit of an XP lead here. He's keeping this, this 20 XP lead on his path to mana frenzy. Yeah, and once again, this artillery is being used to just take out the laser turret there. I guess he doesn't want it in the game. It's like, delete it, he says. Boom buggy, once again, going bottom lane here. And I mean, he's trying to protect it from playing the, the elite uh, uh, Swarmer. I do feel like the Boom Bug has gotten a good amount of value though. I mean, in every matchup it's played, it seems to be getting good solid value overall. Man, you want to talk about getting value though? This laser turret versus the living statue has been really consistent for Zinyu. Yeah, I, yeah I, I, I feel like Mephisto doesn't really want to play the statue almost, because Zinyu cycles fast enough so that even if it takes out one laser turret, by the time a statue push gets on, on, on the other side of the of the field, another one's going to be in hand. It's yeah. a bit... Uh... There it, there's another one! <laughs> And Coming. just like you were saying, there it is, the, the cycle around into it, and there it is. Uh, the Stun Lancers do stun the living, or the uh, laser turret here, keeping the and statue alive. That was a very well timed there, well, a bit lucky as well, but uh, nice timing that the turret, uh, that the statue took out the turret in one hit there, so didn't get it to charge up, but it still dies. Yeah, nice and, and ultimately, I mean, throughout the entire time there, like, all that going on, Sinews hit Mana Frenzy now for a few moments, and... Yeah, really and just those far behind. Yeah. Wow, uh, fairly far behind anyway. He's far enough behind that, uh, unless he can keep these bridges consistently until he gets Frenzy himself, this is gonna be rough. Yeah, and he's really gonna struggle to keep them. I mean, he's already had a hard time keeping them pre-Mana Frenzy for Sinew. And it's definitely not going to get easier. These these turrets actually from Zinio are really really nice. With the he's not keeping range. the bridges. He's over 15 XP away. He's going to be overrun any minute now. Yeah, and you can see the him. the flood starting to come out from Zinio. Even still bringing pings to add insult to injury here. <laughs> and and there's that. that one. There is that one. I guess Zinio showing Memphisto that you know Stormbring is pretty good. Maybe you should try playing it too. Man, the turrets, the turrets are really, really big there for, for Zinia. Yeah, the laser turret there definitely a really high value value card for him. Got a lot out of it, and the magma the pistol, cannon as well. Uh, I mean, all the all these buildings really. I just mean. Even when Memphisto wanted to counter the late laser turret, he had to use his artillery to do it. And at best, that's an e even mana trade. But it didn't really get to cleanly take it out from full health anyway with that card. So it generally meant that he couldn't just get great value in, in any of those trades. And since his Rappel deck seemed fairly, fairly centered around the, okay, I build a push with the statue and the 
boom buggy and maybe some support then and then win just didn't work in this case because of the defensive cards that Sinu had. I do yeah. see that Mephisto originally has Beam in his Rappel deck, but he did not this time. I guess he changed it out for Dunlancers. Yeah, he did. Beam, I, well, I don't think Beam could have really saved him there either, so it didn't really make much of a difference. What do you think uh, is going to happen now, though, in uh, in game uh, game two? One second. Okay. Well, what I think is going to happen uh, is that Mephisto is going to be a bit triggered. He's going to get on a Stormbringer. Going to crush some uh, some futile resistance here. And I'm guessing that Sinus on his Morelia. Nope. On his Rattle and the Ona. So I'm completely wrong. In might as well never listen to me, chat, because the players never listen to my thoughts and my suggestions. <laughs> I I mean, maybe you're just a little disconnected from the players, you know? It's been a minute since you're, you're actively here, um, but that's okay. And for the first time today, we're seeing a uh, the Senshi cards. The uh, That card I couldn't get to read over before you played uh, it. The, the legendary monkey. You know, yeah, see how the, the stun monkey? Oh. That seems like a card. Yeah, it's a. Honestly, I, I feel like this Memphisto deck is definitely something that would uh, be on your list of things you don't want to play against. Uh, I, if this is the one I believe. Uh, let me double check the list. Yeah, uh, actually, yeah, no. So this is Memphisto. I've seen this list before, I've seen them play this list. Uh, this is very much a, a list I think that would irritate you. Uh, really annoying. Oh, I'm sure. A lot of stuns. Oh, sure. I'd be raging. So you're fucking stunning everything. Arr! Yeah, this is this is gnome uh, quickly hitting the alt F4 keys. Uh, not playing this like... matchup later. Yeah, I don't need my dailies. I'm done. I'm gonna play some Minecraft instead right now. Uh, Minecraft, you know, some Apex, whatever. Get your fix elsewhere, but not today. And Zinni doesn't have the alt F4 option here. Uh, and, he's uh, he's in this match and being a tournament match, he definitely well, doesn't just option. leave. But I don't imagine he's gonna use it. Yeah, I I'd be very surprised. Uh... Mephisto did uh, slot in his XP shrine into this Diona, and he exchanged something for it. Obviously, what? That's a good question. Oh, look at the look at the pupper. Look at Ruffles coming out and bringing that heal home from Mephisto. What a good doggo. Uh, we, we all know that uh, Ruffles is uh, the MVP of any matchup he's in. Uh, absolutely. Good doggo. He's a good and boy. the scratch killed him. And uh, well, honestly, the the worst part of any movie is when the dog dies. So exactly. at least we're past That's that now. We're the... past the hard part. This is exactly why you have the website Does the Dog Die? Because you can check if the dog dies in any movie or TV show. Very important. It's a great, it's a great site, chat. Check it out. Anyhow, though, Mephisto not a sponsor. Is not a sponsor. Should be though. Sponsor us. Mephisto is. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Losing some HP here, though. He's uh, under 2,000 again. Yeah, he's definitely taking some damage. Uh, he has a nice XP lead this time, though. Uh, 30 XP, pretty good. And uh, with Ruffles, you know, there's there's definitely the opportunity to get healed back up, uh, or even get a, a more of an XP lead. Honestly, you go a lot of ways. You know, Ruffles can do a lot. Here, when you have the Diona with the with the Ruffles drops and with the XP shrine sliding as well. I mean, I imagine Mephisto just wants to go to Mana Frenzy first this time. I mean, maybe he thought last game, what, you, you think you can get your frenzy fast? I'll show you, sir. I'll show you. Yeah, a little bit of a, a send back here on the, the frenzy. You know, he wants to hit mana frenzy. He wants to, to be the one in mana frenzy this time. And uh, it's definitely lining up for it. Uh, he's taken Ruffles some good... Did. Taken some good damage, but honestly, it's, it's not enough to really be worried yet. He hasn't broken 1500 yet. I mean, Mephisto here at 135 versus 95. XP is definitely looking very favorable here for uh, for the Stormbringer main. Sinu <laughs> uh, though, uh, I mean, he is almost full, full health, so he can't really feel super threatened, but 
if Mephisto does get the Frenzy, obviously he's gonna feel threatened at that point. Yeah, I mean, once you get that Frenzy, that's that's the point of... Yeah. Uh, there's the Bridge Shrine, and... Quick, quick Fireball from Zinnia to, to deal with that. He wants to get that out of there as soon as possible. And uh, Ruffles gets away with the mana there. That is, uh, that is a nice, nice thing. I don't know if Mephisto actually was capped was completed at that point or not. Don't know if both of those actually counted. So many stuns everywhere. Yeah, a lot of stuns. So much mana here and uh, value for Mephisto. I mean, Ruffle's doing a great job. He should be He's honored to get a medal after this. I, I think every Ruffles should be honored and get a medal after every match, honestly. That's true. That last scrap though, killing Ruffles off again, not giving Mephisto that heal I probably would have liked since he is getting fairly low. 1200 another, another fireball there to, to deal with his bridge shrine. And the stun, the map wide stun comes out and then chain lightning follow up there to, to wipe out some of these scrats. And uh, I man, I, I hate being in the spot that Zinyu's in. I hate I hate that feeling when uh, your opponent's playing Bridge Shrine and you're you're fireballing it to just try to get rid of some of the XP, like as much of it as you can. Yeah, it's and like I'm trying hard right now. I'm trying to get it away, but just doesn't want to die. Look at this chain. Look at this chain lightning. I mean, look at that beautiful I... chain lightning. Oh, it's beautiful. I mean, thankfully you can't hide Shrine behind your tower anymore. Those were some horrifying days. Oh yeah. But it's still a annoying enough card, to say the least. Now, Zinni's getting a lot of damage in, and uh... Yeah, fairly... Oh, he might be a bit angry at the, at the shrine or something else. But I mean, you can see here that it's completely opposite than on how this game is going, right? Health-wise, he was in a big lead. XP-wise, Mephisto is in a really big lead. Well, not actually really big. It's, it's not as big as it, you know, some leads are a lot bigger, but it's a, it's a sizable lead, you know, 30 or 25 is pretty sizable. Um, really, Memphisto needs to, to hit that mana frenzy here so badly, though. But at this he, point, Zinyu is just getting so much out. Even if, even if he does, I mean, you think that he's going to be able to get a push across the field easily? I mean, he's not really had so much bridge control lately. It, it's definitely been a while since he's had the bridge control. There's the frenzy, and honestly, at this point, he's just—he's actually he's, in so much danger. Look at all of this. Only, I mean, if he doesn't get it, heal, it almost looks like Zinyu is the one in mana frenzy. Actually, at this point, like if you—you you see the amount of units coming across for him. Uh, uh, I mean, does uh, does Zinyu have a chain lightning as well, or is it only? Uh, it's only Memphisto with the chain lightning, and Zinyu's about to hit mana frenzy himself now. He's actually only four off. Memphisto's really... stabilizing a bit. Well, he doesn't really need it, though. I mean, unless Ruffle can get a heal, he just needs a few fireballs, and that's it. Of course, he needs to hold on against this barrage of Shaolongs. This is a massive push, a massive amount of Shaolongs. Look at all of this damage coming through right now. Zinyu is actually in so much danger. He's going down quickly, and he can't answer. There's no answers. Uh, but Zinyu, why, why are you throwing a fireball against Shaolongs? It's not going <laughs> to work. And that's that's all it took, you know. Really, Memphisto just needed to find a moment to, to get the bridges and capitalize on mana frenzy there and get those Xiao Longs out. And there just wasn't an answer, and you couldn't kill the Xiao Longs. There were so many out. I mean, if you saw that, like immediately when Memphisto had like the bridges for two seconds, it's just like oh, I win. <laughs> yeah, Chain well, Lightning was really good for Memphisto overall. There, that was pretty pretty fantastic. Yeah. Um, definitely Shao. helped him, and then Shao, Shao Ali was in, was insane. It's like pew 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 pew. I mean, if you have like four enraged Shao's on your face, like yep, that's going to hurt you slightly. <laughs> just just a little bit. You'll feel the, the tingle on on your side. A small tingle. Ah, indeed. Well, that means that it is. Uh, it's 1-1. Uh, one, one. Yes? Yes, I think yeah. so. Yeah, that, that brings it to 1-1. One, one. Um, Stormbringer is no longer an option for Xinyu. Diona is no longer an option for Memphisto. Well, so. maybe we'll see a... I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Stormbringer Memphisto now. You think right? we'd... Wait. Wait. You think we'd what? see that now? 
uh, let's see. What? God. What is, uh... God. I forgot to... Okay, never mind. I was like, wait, was Stormbringer banned? No, it wasn't. Never mind. Yeah, so I do think one is gonna go in Stormbringer, and... I, mean, I guess Sinu can go for the Morelia, maybe, if you do. Maybe. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting, interesting. I don't really know. I guess we'll find out very quickly since we are loading in. At least I am. I am loaded in as well, actually. No issues this time. I'm liking that. That's a that's a pleasant change from my, my recent luck here. I to your game. Confirmed. But it's, <clears throat> it is a Stormbringer from Mephisto. Not too surprising. And so you does select to, to uh, stay on his Wrathbow. Yeah, so honestly, it, it felt like he was doing really well with the Rappo, too. It, it felt like he was in a good spot for, you know, the end of the match anyway, after he, he really evened out brought it back. Um, yeah, I mean, he, I mean, to me, it felt like he had the game in the bag. I didn't really think that Mephisto could actually win there. But, uh, but yes, yeah, so I'm sure that Sinu also thought the same thing, that I should have won that game, and I'll try again, and this time I, I will win the game. Yeah, just run it back with the Rappo. Really like the scrap tank from Zinio here. That is a very nice card. Uh, well, a, a nice tank, li literally. Yeah, it's uh, it's a tank. It's a scrap tank. And once again, the acid heh, is being used effectively to take care of that sniper, even though Stormy just pinged him to death anyway. No mercy there. I mean, just imagine you're being burned with acid or poison, and then at the same time you get sniped from the other side of the map. I yes. would rather not imagine that. <laughs> at least his suffering ended quickly. Yeah. Well, Mephisto again. I mean, I feel like every game we're watching here, Mephisto loses health early on, but then comes back at and the end. And this is, I mean, this is so much health though, really. Even, even for the, you know, this, Biddy's yeah. been losing. That's 1,400. He's down 1,400 health right now. He's at 1,600. That's, that's really low for, for just under two minutes. Um, and Zinyu has a really good XP lead here, like over 20. Yeah, I mean, Mephisto, I mean, once again, he's not looking in the best shape in the first minutes of this game, but... Like last game, maybe in 5, 10, 20 minutes time, to bring the game back. Yeah, it, it could definitely happen. Uh, Memphisto is very capable of bringing it back. Uh, I'm very interested to see uh, what could possibly, I mean, what Memphisto has up his sleeve. I mean, he is on, on Stormbringer, so I would imagine he's comfortable, very comfortable with, with, with the deck he has, and uh, I'm sure Sinu is also very frustrated that the Fireball does not one-shot uh, Boom Buggy. Doom Buggy. Boom? Boom. 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 <laughs> BD. Uh, Yo, look at the bat! Look at the nether bat! Just hopping over the golem like, I don't want you, dude. Going right for that buggy. Yeah, the golem doesn't like golem. No, the bat does not like the the oversized golem. Thought no, I, I like someone with a more with a bit more figure. And thought, boom buggy, you're my you're my style. Hmm. Sinu has lost a bit of HP here, but I mean he's still very very healthy. It's just not like he's in any sort of danger. Yeah, he still has like a thousand, yeah, exactly a thousand HP lead, and he has 20 XP. I mean, he's he's in a good I mean, spot. Ratho is doing the Ratho job of uh, keeping decent XP and bridge control, generally. But I don't know. I, I just feel like if Sinu doesn't get some good pushes in, even though he did get one really good push in earlier, and he's getting a bit more in now, if you just keep up these small pushes and just keep, you know. Uh, punching away at Mephisto's face, then, uh, and it's, just to make sure that Mephisto cannot get to Frenzy again, and he should be fine. Honestly, yeah, and I mean, I, I think it'll be big for Zinnia here, he's gonna most likely hit Frenzy first if this game goes to Frenzy, uh, unless Mephisto manages to really even out XP in a big way really fast. 
Uh, yeah, we're Zinyu. looking at a, a Zinyu Mana Frenzy first this match, and I think I think that'll be enough if he hasn't already won by then. I, I think that'll be enough to, to give him that win. Because last time yeah. he, he almost had it even though he was late to Frenzy. And Memphisto doesn't yeah. have Chain Lightning this time. Um, and, I, I don't uh, think. Darker value has been a bit better for Zinyu as well, I feel. I didn't really see too many Darker's last game that were too valuable. But again here, and then the Darker's just like, oh, well, didn't completely kill it, but... Almost for mana value just gone. Yeah, yeah, pretty solid value overall, and um, honestly, it's looking really good for Zinyu here. He's definitely in, in the winning seat, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, he XP is way, way, way better. For very Zinyu. nice XP lead, very good HQ lead, and he has burn damage. He does have the fireball. We've seen him using it on the boom buggy, and. Wouldn't be surprised to see it used on Mem's face once he hits Mana Frenzy even, just to, to get that maybe out there. Even a, uh, maybe even a darker face, who knows. Uh, that might be a little bit harder to see, but it, it, you know, it's always crazy when you do I, see it. I believe, okay. I I can dream, alright? You can, you can absolutely dream. You dream your dream. Thank you, sir. Look at this, look at this uh, push here, look at the Scrat Tank marching in. and. It does not care. I mean, that tank is like one of the few minions that it just, it's gone up to face so many times. Like, I'm gonna hit you. I'm gonna hit, hit you real good. I don't care if Memphisto... I die. Memphisto is taking more damage, man. Honestly, it's really... I, we might not see Zinyu hit Frenzy. He does have the, the huge advantage into it if he needs to, but we might not need to see it. I mean, he might, he might just take the game before Frenzy. 10 XP. Definitely. I mean, this game... This game... I I really just can't see Memphisto winning. I, I just I, I can't. Wait. If Memphisto wins this game, I I'd be incredibly surprised. If he wins this game, I'll, I'll just donate. Uh, I shouldn't make too many claims here because I'm gonna be poor if I do that. But uh, nice cookie. That's what I'm gonna do. You'll you'll donate nice cookie. Very nice cookie indeed. Oh, A very nice cookie. Uh, Will you donate extreme. a nice cookie to me? I could use a nice cookie. Oh, Daka face. What, what did I tell? What did I tell there's you? There's the the yeah. Daka to face. You, yep. There's the gnome prediction. Nailed it. The the face Daka. It was even lethal. Like it wasn't even just a, like a few pings on. It's just like nailed them down. Ah, that that felt good. Okay, so no cookie for Memphisto, but cookie for apples, because apples deserve it. Thank you. And this was the best of three, yes, which means, uh, oof, that set is over. A low curve, a little bit higher than uh, Zinnius. And we're getting into the game. Look at that. Yeah, Clear skies, <laughs> Milloween. We have one Milloween. Uh, Zinnius playing Ratbow oh, versus Dirian's oh. Milloween. I mean, Zinnius must be feeling confident in his Ratbow then. I mean, he's played three games in a row now, right? Yeah, he's he's played a bit of it, and he's done very well with it so far. Um, yeah, so I mean, he I mean, he must I mean the, the cute frog must think that he can win against even Milloween with that. Well, I mean, uh, there's there's something like you know the other the other school of thought probably other than opening with Milo just so you can get the the like you know the early win. Uh, might be play a deck that loses versus the Milloween and uh, get rid of their Milloween and then save yours to, you know, counter a deck that you don't want to play against, right? Um, like maybe outside of the, the Clear Skies Milloween, maybe there's a, a list that Dirian has that Zinyu is like, well, I don't want to play against that list. Like I want to win, you know, against that one for sure. And he saves his Milloween for it. Uh, maybe Apep. Maybe maybe the Setsu, you know, one of them. There, there's definitely an option there, though. That's a that's a fairly juicy fireball there, hitting everything. Dirian is losing some HP here, which is good. I mean, I I'll definitely uh, commend uh, Sinu here for for beating down on the middle wind, slight bit. Yeah, no, he's he's yeah. getting it out really early. Um. And honestly, the other thing is, right, if he plays this matchup, this Rappo versus Milloween, if Dirian's playing the, the Clear Skies Milloween, and Zinyu manages to pull out a win, yeah, how hype would that be? You know, like how good would Definitely. that feel to get that out of there and not deal with it? Or like, I mean, you like you're not you still you still play versus it, right? But like to get a win versus it with a deck that, that maybe isn't favored would feel yeah, really definitely. good. 
Do you think that part of the strategy here for Sinu might be that he thinks Tyrion is going to open with Milloween, therefore he's going to open with maybe his best XP uh, gain slash deny deck that he has to maybe have the best chance of just denying Milloween that third perk and uh, sort of snowball potential? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I definitely think there's there's the uh, option there. I think that could be why we're, we're looking at this Rappo matchup. Um, the question really is, does it happen? I mean, can can he actually outpace the Milloween enough to, to get the win? Definitely. And this, there's been really good trades here. I mean, Fireball into really good Daka. Lancers and then Daka just to obliterate the Golem. I mean, Deering is... is losing a lot of HP here, and he's losing momentum as well, I mean, Sinu is almost at a full health, and, uh, well, slight, slight XP lead, but it's not losing an XP, which is, which is the important part. If Sinu can get a few more good fireballs and good Dakas, he can definitely win this game. Absolutely. I mean, Zinyu's in a really good spot versus this, this Milloween list. At the same um, time, though, I mean, Durian does have clear skies, right? I and mean, he must have. He, he so... certainly has it. I, I'm not uh, expecting Durian, but I, I'm very confident. I, I can't imagine you would play the clear skies Milloween and then take clear skies out. Unless you're memeing horribly. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I mean... But yeah, I mean, I mean... One thing, there we go. One thing is that since Sinu is already full health, Durian can just sort of play the clear skies without any sort of drawback in the way of healing the enemy. Uh -huh. Which is a slight positive at least, kind of. The Daka ah. again. Illicleaver is so good though against those uh, those hordes of scrats. Absolutely, Illicleaver is really just a really good card overall. Uh, the Fireball... Hi. The fireball for half wolves, damage but... on them, it, it gets them a little lower and... I mean, I'm, I'm guessing Sinu also plays the fireball to hit the face as well there because he's maybe wanting yeah. to put the ring on the clock. And there's the clear skies though, healing up the werewolves, healing himself from the fireball damage, leveling this oh. golem a little bit. And also now... healing Sinu at full health before the full force attack phase. Mostly. Yeah, the, yeah, and I mean the damage that comes after that though, right? The, the 500 damage against Zinyu isn't really important, I don't think, for at all in this matchup. Like, you're you're not trying to push through and win, uh, especially from behind like this. And he is really behind. I mean, he's down 30 XP. He's down HP by a bit. Yeah, I mean um, now you can see that. I mean, Zinyu is well ahead in HP. He's also getting further and further ahead in XP. I mean, he's not just having a small lead anymore. He's starting to pull ahead. And that's Literally. that's 500. 500 HP for Dirian. Um, and honestly, he hasn't been able to protect these golems from the Dakas. The, the fireballs have been really good too. Definitely. He needs he needs perk 3 and he needs it really fast. He needs it now and he needs to heal continually. He just can't stop healing really. But I mean, also another point here that I just, I just realized is that I mean, Dirian, not Dirian, the senior, since he has the Daka here, I mean, he's been dealing with these golems so effectively just with the Daka, and if he just intentionally lets like, the 10 stack Golem over the bridge, for example, and just Daka's it, then you know, he gets insane value from that, even though the Golems are insane value themselves. Zero mana is still better than 3, or now, however much they cost nowadays. Zinyu has a 40 XP lead, uh, but there's there's perk 3 for Milloween. Uh, there's... Now, a 2 Golems bottom as well. There are several golems on the field. Um, Bridge Shrine is out for Dirian at the moment. Is he stabilizing? Uh, is uh, is I... this going to be? Is he going to stabilize? Because if he doesn't, I mean, if he does, it even uh, mana the frenzy is going to happen. The thing is as well, though, that like even if Dirian manages to pull back a little bit here, since Sinu does have the Daka there, and again, if you can see there's a Daka obliterating the golems, so even if a golem or two gets over the bridge, there's one Daka down, two Daka down, and there's nothing that can do to, to tank mm. with that once they're once that once they're on the bridge or over the bridge. And Dirian is almost dead here. I mean he's he keeps losing HP, he's almost under a hundred. Oh, clutch heal. But the sniper in the back. Oh, okay. Still, still, still alive. 100 Leave. HP. He needs to get the clear skies actually, out. Uh, 105. The the fireball's coming up from Xenia. He needs to get the heal out. Dirian needs clear skies and he doesn't get it out. He doesn't have it. Um, and that's that's Xenia. 
let's say, quote unquote, flawless win for Sinu. No HP loss. Keep hmm. up. Honestly, not, they. Not even... Gotta give a moment of appreciation to Zinyu. Uh, I don't know if he's been back into the game recently, like if he started playing a lot again. Um, but I haven't seen him in KPC, and uh, I don't believe he played in the first TCL Volco Cup. Uh, and he is playing really well, you know, for, for not playing. He's he's very, very good today. He's really consistent. He's playing Definitely. really well. Um, I, I also feel like if Sinu has played pubs lately, then I'm sure he's run into some uh, close cast middle wings, and I'm sure he has a fiery hate towards them. So it's, I, I imagine it feels good for him to... Uh, to uh, very, I mean, fairly convincingly, I have to say, win this uh, this is this first game. I also have to wonder if uh, Dirian is gonna, I mean, what he's gonna think now? Okay, I mean, is he gonna go with Milloween again? Is, is he just gonna keep trying? I mean, it, maybe he thinks that only the Ratho is able to, to win against his Milloween deck, so that he can just try it again. Showtime! Honestly, I. We're seeing the Milloween again, and we're seeing from Zinyu, we're seeing Stormbringer. Um, can I just... Man, I, I've i never been happier to eat my words. I, I said that the Milloween was going to be, like, you know, the, the first win, the free win. I have never been happier to be wrong. Um, I'm, I'm very happy Definitely. that Zinyu just really crushed it there. I mean, I... I mean... I feel and I hope, quote unquote, that my thought process is correct. That Tyrion is playing the Milloween again because he he thinks that only Senior's Ratho would be able to win against his Milloween, and that Senior doesn't have any other decks that can really win against Milloween, and that's why he, maybe he's playing it again. Great heal. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely possible that that's why. We're seeing and it this again. time, we can see the HP lead going the other way, so far at least. So I'm not mistaken, uh, Dirian did have uh, Howling Moon in his last matchup as well, right? He did, yeah. Okay, so I mean, at least the first Howling Moon push here went fairly well for him. So he's probably not feeling too bad about that one. I don't really feel that Stormbringer here is going to be the best, have the best matchup versus Milloween. You can exactly play a long, drawn out uh, Mana Frenzy game versus Milloween. No. Um, no. I don't. Honestly, I'm not sure, man. It. See, I, I thought last match would not be what it was, so I don't want to discount anything. Maybe maybe there's something here that I'm not seeing. It's very possible. I, I feel like this one is definitely more favored to the to the Milloween here. Um, definitely. Me and... Even even this early lead here is, is a really good sign for Dirian. Yeah, I mean... If, as a Milloween, as a clear list as Milloween, if you can get just any sort of sizable early damage, like pre perk 2, pre perk 3, like you, you're just feeling good. It's like, yeah, okay, I'm already damaged him. Now it's gonna be easy to push him over once I reach that uh, critical mass. Yeah. Laser turret might be a bother though for these big stack golems and uh, the construct as well is tanking. I, I don't know, I mean, like, Sinu doesn't really have the best bridge control deck in his Stormbringer here, which is why Dirin is slightly ahead, even though Dirin does also have the XP Shrine, uh, as, far as, I, as far as I saw there, unless I'm hallucinating. I believe he well. did play an XP Shrine. I, I think you're correct. I mean, we could both be horribly wrong, and chat yeah, could mean, be making fun of us I, right I now. Have, uh, might have stolen some of your streams, so I might, might be uh, you know, there there's the bridge shrine. I said I might be confusing yeah. last game with this game. I exactly. I don't think so, but um, yeah. there there so, it is. We're we're good. I mean, even if Dirian loses some health there, I'm sure he's just very comfortable. It's like yeah, I'm just sitting here. It doesn't matter if I lose like 500 HP. I, mean, I have you know, heal. I have control. Health health is just another resource. Definitely, definitely. Until it's zero, it it doesn't matter. Um, especially well, yes, to an extent. 
I mean, it, it really, like, it. I don't know. See, the thing is, uh, Zinyu has Dagger. I think that's his only burn damage here. Um, dagger not as threatening as something like Fireball. And uh, with Clear Skies, or Beam especially. And with Clear Skies, uh, you know, HP dropping is, is totally fine as long as you're managing how much you drop, you know? Darian yeah, I mean... could, could comfortably hit a low amount of HP and still pull out fine. Yeah, I mean, in Minion Masters, you're supposed to leverage your HP to win the game, and when you have uh, very easily available heals as well, you can leverage your HP to an extreme degree without really dying for it. Yeah. Even though that doesn't mean you should throw away your HP, chat. Just remember that. Okay. Yeah, no, really, really valuable lessons with, with Gnome here, the Minion Masters player that he is. Very valuable lesson, actually. If you're a newer player, don't be afraid to lose some HP sometimes. But don't give away all of it, you know? Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna leverage your HP, actually leverage it. Don't just give it away for free. Because that's yeah. that's not how you do business, or or gaming, for that matter. No. Never give things and, away uh, for free. And I never give things away, definitely. Nothing comes for free. Absolutely not. And uh, man, just look at this. Look at the, the difference here. This game, Dirian is up a bit of XP. He's really, uh, honestly, he's just not feeling. It's the the pressure isn't there from Zinyu like it was last game. Uh, the the double buildings are really really good reactive cards. You know, good to answer things. But they're not putting down pressure. You know, when you play a building, it, it's just there. It doesn't apply pressure. And Look at these three, the all in his bottom as well. There's the yeah. cheap, so, and, the, and being healed. I mean, There's the clear skies. I'm not gonna hold this. No, not not nearly long enough. Durian's taking damage all the while. He is taking damage, but again, HP is just a resource. And yeah, I mean, even though Durian's taking damage here, he has a massive fat golem push bottom, and he's oh, yeah. gonna heal them as well and heal himself. And he is very very. I mean, look at the XP difference. I mean, Tiguan's gonna get frenzy here in in 20 seconds. I mean, he has he has three golems out pushing before frenzy, feeling really strong. Like once frenzy hits, ooh. Yeah, I, I just don't think Sinu. Obviously, I might be wrong, but at this point, I would give it like 90% to Tyrion because I just feel that he has a commanding lead in this game. I I agree. Uh, unless Dirian makes a big mistake, or Sinu makes a god play, or both, then uh, I think uh, we'll see a 1-1 uh, a score after this game here. I fully agree. This is this is Dirian's game to lose at this point, especially with Frenzy here. It's it's Dirian needs to mess up, and I don't think he's going to. I mean, the the margin for error is so high, even if he does. Uh, yeah, and I mean, considering how veteran both these players are, neither of them really ever make any mistakes that are more than marginal at best. And he calls out the GG. The that's. Which is, I mean, it's appropriate. That's not BM. No, I don't. I don't feel that that's BM. Uh, I know me. some people would find that as BM because the game wasn't technically over. But uh, anybody who's played the game a lot and knows what they're talking about knows that's over. Um, yeah, I mean, I can remember back to the, the Discord tournament where, where I participated a while since that was uh, was played. But yeah, in, in that tournament, I called GG multiple times during the tournament games, and the casters thought I was BMing. But I knew that I had had the game in the bag 100%. And I couldn't oh, absolutely. Lose. So I, I've, I've experienced a, a similar thing playing against some people. Uh, a couple streamers and stuff like that you know some games are over and you know they're over and uh you gg i have had games where you know even playing clear skies milloween with like five golems up there at 3k life and i i threw out a gg and afterwards they were like i don't know why you bm'd me like that like where you yeah. know we've been friendly and i'm like it, it's not bm the game's just over man exactly um, it's uh it's just something you learn and you sort of just acquire with experience that, that mm -hmm. i mean when you know enough and you play enough of the game, you, you know when something is over and it's just, yeah, can't recover unless you just AFK. <laughs> I Honestly, there are games I feel even if you AFK. If you're, if you're 20, 30 mana frenzy, you know, XP ahead, you, you drop five golems, they're like level eight, you walk away, you probably won the game anyway. 
Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, uh, well, anyhow, in that case, that was a very convincing Milloween. Well, not very convincing in a way, since Tyrion was low there at multiple points. But in the end, definitely a convincing sort of snowball golem victory. Maybe. And uh, and Milloween's out for Tyrion now. Uh, so that's that's one Milloween gone. Uh... I mean, it's a bit of an interesting situation, right? Because, I mean, I, I imagine that, you know, Tyrion definitely expected to win the first game with the Milloween, so he would have had the lead. Now, he's tied 1-1 and does not have the Milloween anymore. So it's, it's not like he's in a position where he has the advantage uh, or, or he's up, up a game. It's just all even. And he's lost his potentially strongest deck and master. Which could be... Could be dicey moving forward. Yeah, it it definitely doesn't feel great to be out one of your strongest decks, uh, if not your strong. I mean, I I don't know if I'd even say it's a. It's really it's really something. I don't know if I'd say. It's, explicitly. The strongest deck, but probably one of the most consistent decks overall, right? Because, like, I, I don't know if I'd say that Clear Skies Milloween is Darien's de uh, best deck. Like, if I think of Darien as a player, I don't think I'd say that Clear Skies Milloween is his best option in any situation. Like, I wouldn't say that's his strongest. But it's out, and it's probably the most consistent. And, you know, and, so. Yeah, and Darien likes to switch out to the uh, Setsu while Sinu keeps on his Stormbringer. And in. Master wise, I would give Darien the edge again here, but I I always think that Setsu performs very well with a Stormbringer, the majority of cases. Yeah. When I played uh, when when I played Minion Master back in the day, and I played a lot of Setsu, since Setsu is my favorite master. When I match against a Stormbringer, I would always think like, okay, I have a ninety percent chance to win this. Yeah, I agree. I I think. I think I'd agree. That's a lot of damage early from Zinni there on, on Tiberian, 800 out there. Which, which is uh, surprising, so, I mean, Stormbringer doesn't really usually do a lot of early pushes. Generally, anyway. Not really the the, the, the master that's known for DPS early on in the game. And Sinu's deck isn't really that aggressive either, unless he switched out a lot of cards in his deck, which I do not think he did. What's in this Setsu list, though? Wait, is the Red Golem in Dirian's deck? Question. Um, sorry. I am not on Dirian, uh, so I'm not ah, sure what he's on. changed. Are we we're both on Dirian? We're ah, both on Dirian. Excellent, excellent casting. Excellent well, job. So I'm well, not 100% I... sure. I actually also don't completely know which side the stream is spectating but uh, maybe it is seeing you the again the stream the stream is uh spectating Tyrion, uh, i believe well, right so the stream will know if Tyrion has red golem or not while we casters will just casually wait and see i mean obviously i hope he does i mean, I mean we waited so long for this Tyrion has not played a single red golem so far this entire tournament i'm pretty sure and it seems he doesn't have Red Golem, yeah. which means... Like, I'm getting closer and closer to just, like, banning him, really. Just, <laughs> I'm so close. It, it's, it's, really, it's really the lack of rap, though. You know, Darian didn't bring a rap to play his Red Golem in, and he likes Red Golem in general and has it in some other lists, but but really the Darian Red Golem rap, though, is, is what you think of you think of the Red Golem, right? Um, yeah. But yeah. it's it's okay. I mean, it, maybe he's saving it for a special occasion. Maybe he'll break it out later and be like, Hey guys, look, maybe. I haven't played it all tournament, now it's here. In the finals it comes. Hopefully, anyway. But we do set Deer in here, there's lots of doing about HP, and he does not have any HP regen either in his deck, I'm very, fairly sure. Dean mm -hmm. has lots of HP as well, but he's still like 600 or so ahead, which is decent enough. And, uh, I mean, they're both very even on XP as well, so it's not like the Setsu is far ahead in that regard either. So, so far, Dirian has does not really have any sort of big advantage. So the game is not going as one sided as I thought it might be at the beginning of this game. Great dagger pull there as well. But Yeah, uh, definitely not a one sided matchup, which is good. I mean it's it's definitely better for the uh and for the audience in general. Yeah, I mean uh, I mean if, if every single tournament game is whole horribly one sided, that's not exactly fun for the viewers to watch, I mean, is it? Then like you just have cat, you know? Um 
Exactly. Who wants to watch that guy play all, all day, am I right? People. Then again. I mean, I also feel that if you have really like, insanely good players playing perfectly, and that even if they win by 10 million percent margin, it's still so fun just watching them be insanely good. Oh yeah, no, I mean, honestly, it's it's really wonderful to see the little decisions made by really smart players, really good players, and see how it affects the entire game. I mean, I, 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 I understand for like newer players, I don't understand the intricacies of all these plays and how, how the game works, that they find it boring, since I don't really understand all the, all the details in it, but definitely experienced players or other quote-unquote pro players that know exactly what's going on and can see all these small, important things, they find it very, very entertaining at least. I mean, I, I do, so. Yeah, I mean, I find it really interesting. Deering here, under a thousand. But uh, perk three, almost uh, seeing you getting perk three first there. But Deeran very close behind. Deeran might want to start jumping on the face here to, to DPS uh, senior down slightly. But storming your ping is kind of hurt here if he doesn't protect his face. And I don't know if Deeran's actually gonna have an opportunity to uh, to uh, go on face, and he's not. He's selecting to just defend on bridge here. Yeah, Darien is uh, is actually not looking too great here. I mean, he has well, a lot more of just die on face there, but he's almost just, at 400 uh, HP. Yep, just taking some damage. And that being said, Zinyu is at 800, so... Yeah, the, the set to there with a small extra bottom push does get some damage on face there. And the cleaver here is going to thankfully tank some of these uh, Stormbringer pings as is the warrior. And another set to jump comes, and now I'm guessing he's going to jump on a laser turret. Yep. Here we go. Absolutely and jumps gonna... the laser turret, gets the damage on face as well there with the, the laser shot. Yeah. Defends and his great. own face with plasma marines and this this is this and could be game spell. right here. This is another really spell. scary for Zinyu. Come on, There's Darian, the cycle right there, there's the fiber, that's it. Darian takes this one. Yeah, the like the the lethality and the danger of Setsu third perk laser there. Just once you get going and you have some spells and burning hand, you just delete the opponent. Oh, absolutely. You just, you really just take it, you know, you take it home. Uh, I don't, honestly, very, very few masters have the ability to close out a game quite like Setsu. Yeah, which is also why it is still my favorite master, just because it has that insane smork potential, which I personally do quite enjoy. I would, I would agree. I like that a lot as well. It also is great for, you know, all the, the Twitch clips, you know, the comeback and all that. But yeah, so that was uh, another, I mean, very close game. It's not like Darien had that in the bag. It was, uh, could have gone either way very easily there, but it will give Darien the edge of having one game up here, 2-1 to one versus Sinew, so... Uh, yeah, that's good, that's good. I mean, he does now not have the Setsu either. So, I would say his two strongest decks are now not available anymore. Wow, well, wait, does... Yeah, Darien actually has the Apex, so never mind. But, uh, I... Never, I don't know, I feel like De all Darien's decks are great. I don't know anymore. Oh, I, mean, I agree. I, I think Darien's decks are all really good. So, yeah, I'm sure that Darien doesn't actually feel too bad about that. I mean, he's probably confident with all his decks. And, uh... We see that Xenu is still on the Stormbringer. It's like, I'm gonna win on the Stormbringer. I've been so close. I'm gonna, this time, I'm gonna do it. And uh, Volko, I mean, this is another matchup where, again, I feel Tyrion has the edge. When I'm playing Volko and I face a Stormbringer, I generally feel that I have the advantage. But I, I agree. I, I agree mostly. I, I feel, I feel that as well. Especially if you get like any sort of early lead, you get the marked bridge and just sort of you use the afterburner and just ping, 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 and you can easily take a thousand plus HP off the enemy early on. There it was a great Batman play by the by senior there to to protect his uh, drones versus that dagger folder. It's gonna make uh, enable him to oh, another dagger folder. Another really dagger folder. Well, well, from a senior side anyway, and that's gonna enable uh, senior to get a lot of damage on Darien here early, a thousand exactly. That's another really, really good chunk of damage early from Zinyu. That that early aggression really just 
Yeah, there's like that one Bannerman play to keep the drones alive, and then a Daggerfall play to keep them alive again by taking out the Marines. Very just solid, straightforward early gameplay there. But yeah. Xenu is also losing HP here. Yeah, and honestly, between the two of them, if I'm if I'm Volko or I'm Stormbreaker, I'd rather I'd rather be Volko in this situation. If you're losing HP as Stormbringer versus Volko, like Volko definitely has better tools to close out the game, and and like you mentioned earlier yeah. with the Afterburner procs coming through. Yeah, I mean, and as you can see here as well, like you know, Stormbringer is painfully slow at taking care of enemies on the face. So if you don't actively defend yourself with minions or spells, then you you will have a stint on your face for hours before it actually dies, which does you know it does start hurting after a bit. That is a uh, real, real projected timeline from Gnome. The stint will be on your face for hours. Yeah, and, and you know, those pew pews, they might not seem significant, but after a few hundred hits, you'll be like, you know what, I'm not feeling well, I might throw up. So, you know. Tragic. Dyrion is, uh, well, he's slightly ahead here in HP, and, uh, well, I mean, again, XP just seems to be very even every game here. Like, I mean, it seems like, at least early on, neither player has, uh, so far in this series, we've been able to pull insanely ahead, before at least later in the game. A bridge, oh, I love bridge burn. Such a great uh, utility man. spell. They, honestly, burn the bridges, afterburner. Even, uh, even Tempers flaring, even perk 3 for Volko. Volko's, uh, my favorite master in the game. Setsu being my second favorite. Um, I love Volko. I love Burn the Bridges. Yeah. I love yeah, to I mean, see it. Volko was my OG favorite master. I loved him for so long. I made so many people mad when Volko still hit random minions with his uh, with his afterburner. Oh, I would make him rage. My Colossus Volko. Uh, I remember the days. Anyhow. <laughs> but meanwhile... Back in reality, and not memory lane. It's not back to reality, and there's, there's the Dragon Wolf to deal with the drone buzzers. Another good bit of damage from Zinyu though, and he's doing a good job now of holding onto this bridge, or at least trying really hard to hold onto it. But the here burn comes. Here is, it's so nice. I mean, any minions that go on the bridge there, especially if they're stacked up, they just burn to death, and you get so much value from that. Especially if you just get the bridge back as a result, you can just keep pinging them with the afterburner. It's really good yeah. value. And, and even if Zinyu, even if Dyrian isn't that far ahead in HP, being on 800 health versus a Volko is much more scary than being on 1000 health versus Stormbreaker. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's that's really what it comes down to, I, I feel. it's At the end of the day, Zinyu is doing a really good job. He's, he's keeping the aggression pretty well. He's done a lot of damage to Dyrian. But, but Dyrian doesn't have a perk now. Stormbreaker does yeah. not. And Volko closes out games easier than Stormbringer every time. Oh yeah, definitely. And now that the Whelp, for example, will have the buff here, and so will the, uh, oh, no. Oh, that's, that's unfortunate. The buzzer is there for Zinyu. That might be game, game ending, actually. That's yeah, actually. that's, that's the kind of thing right there that, that if you know what you're doing, I mean, honestly, Dyrian could just win the game off of that alone. Zinyu's doing everything he can to keep the bridge, like, you shall not pass, sir. And, I mean, he's, he's getting some damage uh, onto Dyrian's face here as well. I mean, Dyrian is perfectly, but at the same time, Dinu is just a few pings and uh, and a hit. And that's going to be a massive swing there. The the cleaver with the rage is massive. The drone buzzers actually get the shield this time. They are still alive. I feel like Dyrian might just want to use all his burn, including uh, Daggerfall, on Sinu's face, especially when Sinu has the Bannerman. And this is this is really just a fight for this bridge. Dyrian just wants to secure this bridge and get the afterburner ticks here, but Sinew's doing a really good job of holding on to it. Also that uh well if they're taking a one buzzer. And the Stormbringer perk three is helping a lot as well. It's worth yeah. mentioning, it's definitely making a difference. Burn the bridge is really good from Dyrian there, but the pink is it enough? Perk. I mean, the pings is... There's the oh, pings, and... He needs to play something uh, to just keep his face from being pinged here. And he... I uh, he barely keeps the bridge for a second, but he loses it again. And loses now the bridge I... Again and he's, in, he's in so much danger. 25 HP. If he doesn't have something out on the on the board at all times, one ping is all it takes. One dagger fall, and here it is. There's the dagger fall from Zinyu. Now and that's gonna see... be it. Oh. Uh, you can and... see there... 
I mean, he, he was going to play two, three minutes there, right? I, I imagine he had a few mana saved up. So he would have had two, three pings, that's like 200-ish damage. And then if he had that Daggerfall as well, that would have been lethal the other way around. Very, very, very close. And with that, Zinnius Stormbringer is out. This Stormbringer that he's been playing. For some time. Well, for a few games anyway. So cast it dead again? No, he's there. Okay. Oof. Yeah, no, I'm here. I'm here. I'm not dead. I'm sorry. I was I was looking at the lists again really quickly. Uh, uh, um, okay. Just doing oh, a little well, yeah, little so, looking. I mean, that was a bit of a well, not again upset. That's a bit too too strong reverting there, but I definitely feel like. I mean, I feel like Sinu is he's playing very very just well in general. He's playing solidly overall. I mean, he's playing matchups that aren't necessarily favored for him at all but he's still managing to either keep the pace or even win yeah i mean i i honestly before this set it looked like zinio was playing insanely well today and even after the games we've watched so far in this set i'd still say he's playing really well i mean it's definitely been a little more shaky um but it yeah. really could just be a matchup thing um definitely so what? zinio doesn't have his rappa or his stormbringer what do you think is going to happen now, though, now that we're, I guess, once again, we're even? I mean, what, what do you think is going to be pulled out for for both players here? Are, are there even any options? Right, there, there's one option each, right? Yeah, no bans, there we go. Yeah, there, there are no bans. There's still options here. Um, so, Dirian can't play Milloween or Setsu. Uh, Zinyu can't play Stormbringer or Ratbow. So, Zinyu still has Milloween. And Morelia, um, his well, Morelia well, with yeah. the twins is a little, a little bit I, different. I, I mean, I, I would imagine that Senior is like at this point. Okay, now I'm gonna play my my Milloween. Now yeah. is the time. Now, now is the Milloween. Let's get it done. Let's get this. Take wouldn't the win surprised. really quick. Yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if Tyrion uses Apep either. Just like okay, let's let's try Apep now. But I maybe mean, we'll see. I mean, I wonder if they're gonna make any sort of big sideboard adjustments to their decks as well. Maybe put in a fireball into Sinus Milloween there if he decides to play it. Then again, there's already enough spells in it, I suppose. I, I don't know, I mean, I, if Deering expects to play versus Sinus Milloween, I suppose he would rather play the Volko than the Apep to have like a better faster tempo deck just kill the middle as fast as possible so there's a good chance it just sticks with the volco as well yeah no there is there's a really good chance i mean it, it could definitely happen yeah i mean i think we both agree that we expect senior to play the middle here uh for his part at least <clears throat> Let's go. and it's the middle what a surprise it's this is the Milloween versus Volko. So, yeah, so definitely sort of a predicted outcome there. Not that there were too many options. So, Dynasty Milloween even, I think, isn't it? Uh, I believe the Dynasty so. Milloween. Or m m maybe I'm wrong, whatever. If not, um, I I'm just colorblind or blind. Anyhow, though, the uh, fairly sort of expected matchup here, Durian probably is keeping with the Walco because he expects that it's a better it's a better chance versus the Milloween with a sort of fast cycle or aggro Volko in comparison to his APEP. And, well, see noob since he has the Milloween, hasn't played it yet. I mean, he might, he might as well. If not now, then when? Yeah, I mean, honestly, play it now. Uh, play it. Get your your win. What may be your win? I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to speak in absolutes. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not a Sith. I'm not here for uh, that. I, I um, see. I see. But there's definitely we're leaning into it. I mean, I I feel like this is. Um, overall, it's definitely Milloween is is scary. Milloween's consistent, and he has it. He's two two in the set. Why not play it now? Um. 
Well, definitely. And this I is mean, this is what you were talking about earlier too, or like we mentioned earlier, right? You you save it so that you can win when you need to instead of playing it first. I mean. Yeah, I mean you saw how it worked out for Darian uh, in the first game. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm sure that Senior's a bit sort of maybe a bit uh, happy that he saved the uh, his his potential quote unquote ace in the hole for his uh, for the final game here. Yeah. Darian is losing a good amount of HP, surprisingly. I didn't really expect him to lose this much HP this early, whereas it's a Milloween. Yeah, no, it, it's not. It's not what you expect. You don't... When you're playing versus the Clear Skies Milloween, you, you don't anticipate the early advantage uh, for the Milloween, right? Like, normally you, you lose out a little bit early as the Milo. Uh, where you, you go, e I mean, I, I feel like you lose out or you go even normally early yeah. as the, the Milo. And then, you know, late on, once you get your, your perk 2, perk 3, you start to get that advantage. But Zinni's kind of just got the advantage. I mean, not a massive one by any means. It's only like 6, 5 yeah. XP. Yeah, and... small one here. But, but, but that early that, lead feels uh, really good. Do you think that Darian might be intentionally, nice black hole by the way, might be intentionally losing or willing to sacrifice a bit more HP since he is very well aware that Senior has guys. Um maybe? I I don't I don't think so. Um to be honest I don't think so. Mostly because he's not only losing out on HP, but he's losing out on XP. Yeah and definitely he's not he hasn't really traded anything for that HP to make up for yeah. it. Like if you're if you're going to lose HP intentionally or or maybe play a little bit more loosely around HP because of the opponent playing clear skies, you have to be winning on XP or at least keeping up. And Sinew's no. 20 XP up right now, and and even though and, he's going to heal Darian some, like and, and that blood black hole as well. I guess he wants to cleaver out of the way. He knows he can target bottom instead of top. But I mean, Darian is getting fairly low in HP here. I mean, he's almost under a thousand already. Is gonna be under a thousand. And XP wise, I mean, almost, almost thirty in favor of Sinews. I think this is gonna. I mean, now I think we can, with more certainty, say that yeah, Middlewing is looking pretty good. Yeah, yeah. This is this is really really good for Sinews. This is a really good place to be. He's about uh, to hit the perk three. Yeah, I mean, five mana left till uh, snowball point. Yep. Oh, he placed the construct there, I guess expecting it to be a real cleaver, but to bait it! Can never be too sure though, don't want to lose your golem to uh, stick like that anyway, so... Guess worth. But yeah, now that he has third perk, I just, I don't see how Deering is gonna win. I just, I really don't. No, I, I don't see it happening. I, I feel, again, uh, I've said it before, this is Zidio's game to lose though, like... It is. And I... He isn't going to. There's there's almost no way. Um, I, again, if there are any children watching the stream, look away now. Don't watch the cruelty towards Vol Volko. It's not worth it. My poor, poor Volko. Exactly. I mean, I feel like if you're going to play this matchup, you, you have like maybe a 60-40 chance of winning pre-perk 3. Goes out to GG there, understandably. But yeah. when the Milwin hits perk 3, you maybe have like a five percent chance to win if the opponent makes a mistake or something of the like, or you just play like an absolute god. Yeah, I mean, I I can't imagine normally deciding to, and we're opening up with uh with Gnome's favorite option after the clear skies. Not Halloween, another double A pep. Which is uh one snaky boy versus one snaky boy. A pep versus A pep. I was just gonna say before this game started, like, oh, what do they have left? Wait, both have A pep. Oh no. Oh, oh, don't tell me. Oh, no. And, uh, man, Acer with the Bounty Sniper in his APEP, though. I really like it. Bounty Sniper is... I mean, it's, it's a card I think is really... I mean, it's pretty strong nowadays, and especially in APEP, it performs really well. I don't know if he has the Bounty Man or not, but, uh... Yeah. What card did he get from his, uh, uh, present there? That's a great question. He does have the Banner Man, uh, in his list if he didn't sideboard it. Um, we have the, the first of the perk cards coming out here. Uh, Deadshot actually got Haunting Hugger. He did. Are you spectating Deadshot again? Uh, yes. The same all right. people all the time. Look, we're, we're, look, okay, I like you, Gnome. I'm not trying to watch the same person. Yeah, I need you to... 
Like, yeah, I keep but... switching, it keeps switching this up, and I just didn't finish. We... So I came the other one. Yeah, okay, really good, good work, good communication. Here, I'll, I'll switch right now. But I, I was just switching, and you switching. <laughs> okay, gnome? No. Uh... Gnome! No, no, <laughs> it's, no. Nothing's happening, chat. Uh... <clears throat> <clears throat> uh -huh. Nothing, see? nothing at all, nothing to see here, nothing at all. Uh, you know? Uh, Acer awesome. played his jungle jumble. He got he got a Xiao Long. He got a blue golem. Uh, really really cool. Not the red golem we saw earlier. Red golem was really exciting. But uh, getting a two mana Xiao Long is gonna feel really good. I, I would imagine it does. And there's a nice hefty XP lead by Deadshot. Actually, he's up 30 XP right now, which is quite a lot in the early game. Uh, there's the bounty sniper from Acer, which can help him get back. Uh, his the future present from Acer was Bazooka Strat. That's really interesting. Uh, you never that know. Is... Well, I guess Smork is the is the play. Yeah, uh, if the game goes really long and you you start to get the flood out there and you get a Bazooka Strat, I mean, and getting a couple through here and there really really does a lot of damage actually. So. I mean, wait, does Acer have any any tanks in his deck? Um... Uh, he has the he has the blue golem from the jungle jumble. Uh, it's a nice bit of HP. That's true. It's a bit expensive though, just for a tank. Yeah, I mean, you don't you don't want to use it just for that. But it, in general, like it's a, it's probably his best option, I think. Uh... Really, enough, he just needs enough. to be able to protect this bounty sniper and get some kind of. Oh, that's. That, that wheel, though. That's a really, really good wheel. I'll, uh, not, I'll not make the, the wheelie good pun. I don't want to make anybody leave, so. Oh, really this, now? This 20 XP we'll, we'll lead from, much. from Deadshot on the way to perk 3 is going to feel really good once he hits that perk 3. But. I don't know. Overall, I mean, if, if Acer manages to stay in this, I he has a lot of value here with the jungle jumble cards, these, sure, these discounted cards. I was aimed at yeah, double Xiao Long here for, for Acer. I guess he really just wants uh, Deadshot to play any spells. And, and I mean, sometimes it happens, right? We saw it earlier, the, the Memphisto match, he had four Xiao Longs out and... Uh, and, and they hurt. They, they get... Somebody tries to fireball four Xiao Longs and... Four Xiao Longs just win the game, right? Um, here's a Bazooka Scrat. And there goes the Bazooka Scrat. There's the wheel to, to finish it out. I, mean, I almost expect Bazooka Scrat to be able to, like, just Bazooka the wheel coming in. That'd be uh, good I mean, that'd buff be really to the cool. card. That'd be a good buff to the card. Bazooka Scrat can s intercept the wheel and just blow, blow it out of the sky. I, I would like that. That sounds really good. Sounds really cool. I don't think Wheel needs uh, another counter. I don't think it needs a nerf. But Bazooka Scrat being able to do that would make me really happy. That, that, that'd be great. So, Beta Dwarf, you know what to do. I expect to hear from you next patch. Thank you. And there's the Wheel again, and it wipes out a Bazooka Scrat. I mean, it, it wasn't like to kill the Bazooka Scrat, but he, you know. He seems like just, he just plays the Bazooka Scrat, and right when the Wheel is coming towards, it's like, ah, oh, well, awkward. Yeah, the yeah feels feels bad, man. This free bazooka scrap not getting any any real work done. I'm but, just worried here for Deadshot. I mean, uh, for Acer. I mean, I mean Deadshot is is, yeah. is pulling ahead in XP here, and if it's gonna yeah. be a, a frenzy a frenzy match, then I think the one that reaches the first will win in the epic mirror. I I agree with that. Uh, I think generally speaking, that's the case. Um, However, there is definitely a lot of consideration here for, for Acer if he manages to keep it a little, if he can get it a little closer between Bounty Sniper and then having the discounted cards from Jungle Jumble, like he, he really isn't in a bad spot. He also got uh, the Fire Imp as his perk 3, his free card from perk 3. A really, really strong card. Or, or Acer or Deadshot? Uh, Acer. Acer got Fire Imp. Dead shot also got fire imp though. So, okay, so fire imp. It's it's a good. Yeah. It's so good you know. that it, uh, it, it it's just it's 
And look, look really quickly at the XP though. Look at the uh, the lead the Deadshot had, and look how quickly it dropped here. Yeah, and the HP lead as well. I mean, I believe he had a small HP lead as well. But and now there's a bazooka scratch shot. I mean, it hurts. It's yeah, it's gonna they add up. Like I guess the Banish Sniper phrase sir has definitely helped him as well, Kono, sort of get back into the XP game here. Oh, definitely. The the Bounty Sniper is probably what saved the day for him XP wise. Uh, plus the the bit of bridge control he had for a while. Playing it um, a bit early, almost on that shot side here. Well, not not gonna matter in the end, but still, gotta make every second count. Mhm. Mm Push sometimes, the sometimes here. it only takes one second to, to finish a game out, I mean, so... Well, that's what she said, it was a joke I was gonna make, but oh. never mind. Um, I feel bad for her, I guess. And there's the I wheel blocked by the blue golem. I mean, the, I mean, wheel, as we mentioned before, can be easily enough blocked if you know it's coming and you have, you know, you have the hand. Yeah. And uh, yeah, blue, blue golem there being a bro, saving body sniper, even though. And there's mana frenzy for Acer, and this game is now 100% yeah. in his hands. This is his game to lose. Uh, bounty sniper, the jungle jumble, the discounts are it's huge. Great deal, but even even if the wheel gets value here, he's not taking the bridge with it. He's not making counter push with it. And considering he has uh, one third of the HP, not even that that. Uh, Acer has, and he's still not frenzy. Yeah, as, as you said, I just Acer has to really, really just AFK beyond 100%. I think it was. Yeah. And there's two enraged Xiao Longs out right now, just trying to clear up the board and get to Deadshot's face. And there's the totem to protect him for a little bit, but as soon as that goes down, there's nothing to do here. There isn't enough clear in the game to save him at this point. Look at look at this. There's so many angry Shao Longs. Yeah, what we need is a 10 mana board wide. You want the board clears. That's, I mean, it's almost just unbelievable though how much damage a totem like that can tank in a mana frenzy situation. Like, I don't know how many thousands of HP it, it tanks there in just a few seconds, but oof. A yeah, lot. there's there's a lot. It's quite a lot, and I mean we there there aren't options to save him there. There isn't a board clear to save him. Um, I mean, there's... Meme Storm is maybe the one of the only ones that could, if you're lucky, hit the right spots. But even then, but, it's not like. But could it? Would Meme Storm kill the four Shao Longs with shields before they kill him after the totem if... dies? If you pray to RNG, Jesus, it it might, might. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's one of those games, man. There there isn't. <clears throat> Excuse me. As a as a Magic player, uh, there's there's cards in Magic that can destroy everything. There's Wrath of God and Damnation and stuff like that. Uh, and there isn't that option here. So in Mana Frenzy, especially once the board is covered like that, it's it's all over. And it's just, just so much. It was really good, though. Uh, they both played pretty well. It was really nice to see how well uh, he managed to bring it back. Like, honestly, the, the bounty sniper was so good for him. Yeah, I mean, bounty sniper has just been so valuable overall in, the, in these... Uh... Especially in this APEP games, I guess, I mean, in the end, that was probably one of the key cards, like Elias or the, the advantage and win there in the end, Masters, I think. Masters, get ready! Let's go! And are, are, are we loading in? Oh, seems we are. Oh yeah, we're loaded. And we're, we're set we're to loaded. versus oh, APEP. Lord. This yep. isn't America, sir. We, well, at least I'm on the matter, so I, I can't carry oh. guns here. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. That's probably for the better, actually. But we're not going to turn this into a debate about politics. We're not going to talk politics. We're going to talk no, minion that masters. That would be awkward. And we're going to talk minion masters. Spear throwers are also loaded, not with a gun, but with some very nice spears, and they're going to hit yeah, that shot. Yeah, there's, there's some stun lancers played out here, dealing with these swarmers, and they're going to 
They're gonna split. And they're gonna take the bridges. In some lands, it's not the most effective uh, bridge grab, but uh, better than none. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, they they killed some stuff. They got some bridges for a second or two. They did their part. Nice defensive there as well. Just uh, well, Morgul gone and uh, Stormer gone. And right, Setsu. I mean, well. Uh, this is another game where I would say Aster will have the advantage as long as he gets enough damage in pre perk 2 for DFF. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it's gonna be very, very difficult for Setsu to get the damage in once that totem is up. It's just a pain, an unbelievable pain that I've felt so many times before, and it hurts my heart. Oh, yeah. It's, it's painful. You, you jump on face, like, well, totem, and you jump on face again, more totems, and then you just sort of AFK, go jump into bed and cry. Yeah, absolutely. You cry. Cry some more. Cry, cry a lot. Time. Exactly. Really even XP game here so far. A HP is pretty even as well, which is Almost kind identical. of good for Deadshot. Yeah, I mean, Deadshot is just ha I mean, imagine that Deadshot is happy here. Just as long as he's not losing in XP and losing a lot in HP, he's probably confident enough because he probably thinks he's going to get enough value moving forward with uh, with his perks and, and the shield. Oh, yeah. Morgul played... Yeah. English? Morgul played for Acer there to split and take the bridges, but the top died, so he plays the, the bridge buddies there. But Defenso is here to clean up the entire day. Absolutely. Many, many times as he wants, he almost doesn't care. Uh, free crossbow dudes, whatever. whatever. You whatever gotta appreciate the free dudes. And here's a Setsu jump on face. Deadshot does have the totem and plays it out though. And honestly, that's, that's good for him. I mean, he has a nice little XP lead. He's starting to get a little bit more. Once he gets perk three, it'll help a lot, but. Yeah. This is, as long as Deadshot doesn't make any big mistakes here with the shield placement or, or totem placement or anything else, then uh, I think it's gonna be comfortable going into late game here. Yeah, I agree. I'm interested to see if Aster is gonna go really aggressive now though. Uh, it does allege to go, uh, or choose to go uh, aggressive here. Though totem just gets back in hand at the perfect timing, so unfortunate. Even though Acer isn't losing that much on on uh, XP uh, yet, it's not like yeah. he's super super happy about the uh, the lead that Deadshot has, especially with third perk coming in soon. It's just yeah. going to be quite annoyed with the value. It's definitely going to be frustrating once Deadshot hits that perk three and gets the the free card. Um, normally. Normally, anyway, if you fall behind a little bit in XP, it's not going to be the end of the world. Like, I mean, once he hits the Setsu perk 3, it, even if he hits it a little bit later, it's still Setsu perk 3. It's still really strong. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, getting getting the stun, getting the, the double damage, it, it's so big, actually. Uh, honestly, it just the game is going to come down, I think, to how well Deadshot manages to play around the Setsu perk 3 with his totems. And, uh, and just... At the end of the day, I, I don't know if Acer is going to be able to close out the game against the APEP invulnerability. And uh, uh, seems like the Deadshot is running wild cards again. Here comes uh, the double crossbow dude set up. See if he feels good. Four. Another set double shielded crossbow dude. And wild cards are great. I mean, even if they're banned, they get into the game. I don't understand. You know how it is. I mean, wild cards are... Part of diversity, cool. diversity. I love diversity. Me too. Especially in my video games. Absolutely. And uh, shielded crossbow dudes, man. Look at all these, look at all these dudes on the field. A lot of dudes. I mean, now though that Deadshot already has perk three, well, he's just gonna use perk uh, perk three very shortly as well. And if it, if I mean Deadshot, well, he's probably not gonna care too much if Deadshot just has an XP lead as long as he doesn't get to frenzy too soon, right? 
Yeah, I mean, the, the ADXP after perk 3 to get to Mana Frenzy, you're not going to worry about it unless they hit Frenzy. And Acer's goal isn't to, to hit Frenzy with Deadshot and then kill him anyway. The, the goal of this Setsu isn't to, to have a Mana Frenzy fight, right? It's to kill the opponent. And he's going to try to do that before well, Mana Frenzy. To take care of Setsu, jump there. Not mana effective, but kills her anyway, so... Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not the most efficient answer, but it's a solid answer. And honestly, losing out on, on two mana to make that trade and kill Setsu, and then playing a four mana card for free, I mean, you know, kind of make up for eight it. Eight pet valuations makes sense, math. Yeah. Another thing, though, I mean, I, I mean, Deadshot has played his totem fairly well so far, I suppose, but one, you know, trademark of a really good player, and a good APEP player at least, is, you know, know where and how to place your totem. Yeah. I, I feel like he's shown a good job so far. He's shown that he's, you know, not just placing it in the same spot every single time. Yeah, um, and he's not just, like, playing it immediately once he has it in hand. There's two. Yeah, he doesn't that. auto play it, or or he doesn't. He also hasn't been in like playing it as soon as Acer jumps either, which is uh, really yeah. good because you know some some Apeps get a little jumpy and they see the Setsu jump and they place the totem and then Setsu either like kills it or just doesn't land anywhere near them. Like right there, if yeah. uh, if Deadshot had played it, it would feel really bad for him. You know, like it's just out there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, also if you are like a really top tier player, then a lot of the time you can't you, you can sort of. Uh, anticipate where the set is going to land, but still, it's not like it's 100% anyway. So yeah, no need to preemptively, you know, put down your totem, chat. Be patient. And uh, that thing we were talking about earlier about about the ADXP Frenzy? not mattering until Frenzy. We're four yeah, mana, yeah. four XP from Frenzy. Um, well, if I close my eyes and don't look at the XP screen uh, counter, does that help? Or, uh... Uh... I mean, you can you can close one eye and look at half the screen if you want. Maybe that'll that'll help you see what's okay. happening here. Um, I'll definitely try. Yeah. We're 25 XP from Frenzy for Acer. Deadshot has hit Frenzy. Uh, he's taken a bit of damage there. He's down to 1k life. But at this point, honestly, with Mana Frenzy, we're, uh, we're on a big timer here. Acer is only 18 XP away as well, so if he just keeps the bridges for a bit, he's gonna get Frenzy himself as well. And if with both players having Frenzy, obviously the APEP has way more value that he can just throw out, so APEP would have the advantage, I would imagine. But it just takes one misplay or one Setsu push, and you can still die. So uh, yeah, I mean he's he's decided. definitely it's not completely over. I would I would say it's Deadshot's game to lose at this point, but it's definitely still in. The realm yeah. of possibility. Acer could still pull this out. Yeah, I I'd say like an 80, 80 to 85 percent chance for dead shot, and then, well, 15 ish for. That sets you jump there. That's game. That's dead shot's definitely about to take this right now. It's over. That was a it was a and... nice try. Yeah, just like a last stitch effort. So like you need to get damage in. Uh, can't get enough damage in. Yeah, I mean, Acer, Acer felt the pressure there to, to try to get the win, and he tried to take the opportunity, but he jumped with the totem up. He didn't have an answer to the... I mean, he had cards he could have used to, to take the totem uh, and get damage, uh, yeah. but he landed, and he got the shot off. The shot didn't hit the totem, played a spell, and then stun lancers were on Setsu, and it was too late. You know, I mean, it, it just happened that way, and yeah, sometimes I mean, that is it. Setsu is also, I mean, in my opinion, one of the worst masters to have up against an APEP just because the totem is so incredibly annoying just based and effectively can cancel out your entire first and third perk almost yeah I would much rather play for example a Volko where I can have continual pressure which I'm much more happy with versus an APEP agreed Well, I guess Apep is now gone for everybody. Yeah, and Apep's out. Um, Milloween's are out. So now we get some real gameplay. Kind of.
Oh, uh, right. We I mean, Acer has the two aggressive masters here, Volko Satsu, while Deadshot has more of a, I guess, uh, slow long term game plan of Morelia or Stormbring. I, Sorry. Am I lying out again? Cause I, no, I no, you're you're fine. Silence. You're fine. Like, that's that's my fault entirely. My apologies. Uh, you're fine. not lying out you're here. I mean, I mean, I'm happy to just talk forever. Really, <clears throat> it's my pleasure. You know. I mean, people people love hearing you talk too. So. Oh, obviously, I am a delight. Any anyhow, <clears throat> what do you think uh, is going to happen now? I mean, personally, I would say that since Acer has the two aggro masters left, while Deadshot has two more. Slow masters, I would give the edge to Acer in general. But uh, uh, I would, I would think? also, I would also give the edge to Acer. I think I, I like the the more aggro masters. I like his odds with the more aggro option. And uh, we're going to see the Volko here from Acer into Deadshot's Morelia. All right, that would be that's interesting. I, mean, I in this case as well as as we said, I, I would give the edge to to Volko here. I mean. If Deadshot can get the third perk and uh, get the huge dragon uh, out on the board, then uh, could win the game off of that, for example. Or even earlier, potentially, but I don't think we're gonna see a win for Deadshot before perk 3 in any case. Yeah. But 10, well, what's in this uh, Volko deck? I almost said Apex deck, but uh, this Apex uh, deck, uh, yeah. we're not we're not playing Apex. Um, exactly. My, I'll, I had to really I'll hit you up for that later, maybe. Uh, he is playing uh, Laser Turret. Is in this uh, Aim Bot Defensa. We got Flightless Dragons. We got we got the Plasma Marines, the Morgrill, the Screaming Star. We got a we got a nice list here, like a, a pretty good uh, mm -hmm. like mid range ish list. Definitely. I almost I mean it would have been fun if I said Apex deck and then you said he had an A bot in his Apex deck. That would oh, that would be great. That would have been really mind. really funny, but but also we're not talking about it. Gnome, get your head. I'm, in so, I'm sorry. Masters. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I I, I get derailed sometimes. Nah, Anyhow, it happens. Cleaver on this side. Cleaver on that side. That oh, was a fake one. Never mind. I got you baited. But yeah, Yo. Deadshot is uh, losing HP. There's a bat, and the bat just says, uh, all right, I'm tired of life. He goes on the defense so there and dies. Yeah, a bit of a seppuku uh, action there. Understandable, honestly. Uh, I mean, who who doesn't relate to the bat right now? Um, I mean, artillery coming in, day. hitting this aim bot. Breaks the shield, does some damage, doesn't finish it off. I mean, it, it's still alive. And... Yeah. I mean... I mean, yeah, I mean, as we said before this match, uh, and now even more, I would say that Acer has a clear advantage, even though x is a bit behind, not a super, super far behind, and HP-wise is just very comfortable here. Yeah, Morelia does have an option to get some health back. Uh, one of the, the both options does give them some health. But that's still only like, what, that's like two pings worth? It's yeah, uh, I believe it's like two. Uh, so, honestly, Acer definitely has the advantage. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, Deadshot, it's a nice little XP lead that he's building up, but the the XP won't matter if he dies. And, and also now with second perk for Acer, that bridge burn is gonna be way more valuable in comparison to uh, Morelia. Yeah, bridge burn really high value. Like sample versus the spirit throwers or even cleaver potentially. I mean, we can just we can just burn everything and it will be it will be the pretty skeletons nice. there. That as well. They just instantly deleted. And uh, Acer has the marked bridge here. Well, he had the marked bridge. Never mind. I mean, every little ping here counts. Yeah, I mean, at, at this point, everything is important. I don't know. Acer doesn't really have any burn, does he? Or at least not. Much of anything. Uh, I I don't think he has direct damage in his in his hand or deck here. Um, just the the afterburner picks. I mean, 
I mean, that is enough, really. I mean, just the, I here mean... you can see the you can see the defense. So uh, that's an interesting play there. Almost lost all his spirit throwers to that defense. So. I mean, at this point, Acer just needs 14 more pings uh, from from 850, which isn't a lot. I mean, if you if you really think about it, that's not a lot. That's uh, definitely not. And uh, also, just even uh, uh, for example, with a cleaver hit, or if he gets the perk three, one cleaver hit is definitely enough. Yeah. Oh, ah, we're uh, coming in. No, fake, fake. God damn it! A, I can't fake. It. Gnome, you're. That's okay, you know, it's alright. My screen is too small, okay? I gotta get my glasses on, just zoom in here to see if it's fake or not. Yeah, old old man gnome having a hard time, understandable. But mm. is he playing a real cleaver at all? I'm not actually sure. I'm so, I'm so used to, no he's not. I'm just so used to say, seeing real cleavers in Volko. Uh, here's, uh, here's our Nervir. Now, Acer has laser turret. Uh, oh, Good that's dead. that's a that's a misplay. That's that's rough there. I was gonna say he has laser turret, which will eat this dragon so fast. Um, but bit of a misplay there. Leaves him in, a, in a rough died, spot. Man, like... The AOE here is pretty rough. I the thing is, I I don't feel like Acer played that incredibly well. I I feel like there were some mistakes made there. Yeah, and I mean, the Nervir is still those. dying, though. I mean, did you see those shrimps? I mean, shrimps yeah, with third the, perk. Yup. Cool. The that's it, and that's scary. I mean, that's that's really scary uh, to see how well he managed. Like, even with the misplays there, how quickly the Nervir went down is is really something. And dead shots within ten pings now. Um, yeah, and, and uh... without Nervir. I mean, and even if Dejo has like a 40, 30 XP, it doesn't matter. I don't think he's gonna get. To... And e even if he does, if if Morelia can't regain a lot of HP here quickly, don't think there's anything that that Dejo can do. Yeah, it and it's only getting worse. I mean, he's 20 XP away, but. That being said, I, if we're going to be realistic though, I mean, Deadshot, Deadshot could still win this, definitely. Um, I mean, yeah, it could. I, I would he, still have to give the edge to Acer though. Yeah, I would I would give the edge to Acer as well, uh, but I, I wouldn't rule out Deadshot here. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll play along and say that Deadshot has a 50%, 15%. Here. Oh, I would I would I would give him higher than 15, um, I think, honestly, if he uh, he's he's definitely at a disadvantage, but I think right, he has maybe. he has an opportunity. We'll see. And frenzy hitting. There we go. And now, first and foremost, he needs top bridge. Yeah, he I mean, cannot he, give up top bridge. He took two pings there, just yep. three, four more, yep. or he maybe needs a hit. He sword. needs to maintain top bridge. And if he can do Tens that, I mean, ah. I, I also feel like he needs to heal uh, from his spell in the event that he messes up and loses the bridge. I think Definitely. he should get some HP. Uh, he's three pings from from death right now. Yeah, and the uh, burn there is gonna take care of everything on the everything on the bridge. Gonna get a Shaolong on there as well. I mean, Deadshot is doing everything he can, but one ping away. And here. he's one ping away. He he needs. He needs help. I just, I just don't feel like I, it's, it's possible for him to avoid a single ping. I mean, honestly, it, it's it's incredibly easy if you're Acer to get the bridge for half a second and win the game. Um, yeah, I mean, especially when you're so good at the game, you have incredibly fast just placement. And uh, Deadshot, Deadshot opts in for the skeletons there. He he goes for the skeletons to try to keep the bridge here, and he is still within one ping. And honestly, even. It, it takes just a very, very quick mistake. He's getting I mean, some pressure he, in he, here, he's but... He's just keeping the bridge, barely. He just keeps playing things on the bridge, like, play more, play more, play more. And he's, he's pacing, it's important too that he's pacing it out here. He's he's not giving a chance to have the bridge uncovered. Um, and that's, there's the heal right there. That's really vital here. I think the heal is really important. I'm glad he opted for it instead of the skeletons there. 
I, I feel like that's the better play because now he's two, uh, three things, three things out now. And if he's managed to hold the bridge this long against one, he can definitely cap versus three. He can hold it versus three. And I think this is Deadshot's game now. I think I think Deadshot wins this game now. Uh, it also just takes a single mistake in not having that bridge, and he's also dead. That's true. That's true. He can he can still lose very quickly, but I I feel like he, the way he's playing, I I feel like this is back in his yeah, hands. Yeah. Acer's closing in on Mana Frenzy himself, though. But it's not going to matter in this uh, no. in this case, I think. No, this is this is definitely Deadshot's game. Very, very well played by Deadshot. Uh, I know he had Mana Frenzy early, and some people might have been expecting uh, him to pull it back faster, but I feel like he played that the best way he could. Um, and at that, at that point where I commented that he has a chance to win when you, when you said 15%, I felt really confident in his ability. This is, uh, this is Deary and, and Deadshot here. Um, Deadshot really making a case for himself to, to make it to the finals, honestly. He, yeah, I mean, what, I a, think... what a journey he's had, right? Losing out in round two of winners and then beating three people to four people to get to this match, including Memphisto and Acer, who knocked him out originally. Yeah, I mean, I've, uh, I, mean, I feel I've seen Deadshot plays fairly well in previous tournaments as well, unless I'm hallucinating. Um, honestly? I don't know if you're hallucinating. He didn't play in uh, in Volca Cup one, and I haven't seen him much in KPC. Yeah, no, uh, and anyway. no, somewhere anyway. So, so stuff. Yes, getting, so getting into the game. Oh. And wait, we have Milloween Mil with Milloween uh, for Deadshot, and we have Milloween for Dirian. And uh... let the games begin. And continue for approximately 12 to 15 minutes, potentially. I mean, I, I, mean, I wouldn't mind a 25-minute game. That would be a nice sort of, you know. Honestly, you talk pressure. about talk about needing a break after the last game. Ooh. Yeah, we'll, we'll be here for a few hours, chat. So just you, just you wait and enjoy. All right. Any, you know, honestly though, getting into this game, we have a uh, we have Magma Storm from Deadshot. I like to see the that. First That's pretty cool. One so far, this tournament, I think. At least I haven't seen one. I, I don't recall seeing one played either so far today. Um, the memes have come back, not even an APEP. I love me a magma storm, a meme storm, if you will. Um, Dirian, on the other hand, has this Howling Moon. Howling Moon, also a fairly solid card here. Yeah. Does, uh, really does Deadshot play Howling Moon? I don't know. Uh, he doesn't have it in this list. Uh, and he does not sideboard either, so yeah. Yeah, so he won't be playing the Howling Moon. I think Howling Moon's a really good card here uh, for Dirian. Yeah, it is, it is. I mean, and he did get, what, three, four hundred damage on that one that got to face? Yeah. Another meme storm. And it's a pretty good meme storm, too. It does pretty well. Takes out that golem there, gets a couple, a couple hits on face, and I mean, uh. I really love. Magma Storm, Meme Storm in a sort of mirror matchup of APEP or Milwin or any late game situation because you have those really big impactful balls just being thrown with, you know, to, uh, yeah. to who generally where you want them, not exactly but close enough. And you can really just, even in Mana Frenzy, turn the tide of a battle just because you can just clear so much. Oh yeah. Not sure if that hit in the black hole there. It seemed like it, it did not, okay. Not sure if that was worth it though, but eh, probably perhaps was. It does heal it as well, so in that case it was worth it. And this is a pretty nice little golem push from Deadshot in the top side here. He's getting hit in the face by this wolf, but I mean, honestly... I mean, eight stack golem pre perk 3 is not, not too shabby. Yeah, I mean he's still taking some damage. Honestly, I... Yeah. Man. The thing is, in a Milloween versus Milloween double clear skies matchup, uh, this early damage almost means nothing at all. True. Um, but I'm so happy though to see Black Hole being played, you know, as a versatile card. Honestly, here. it's so good. It's it's such a great card. Yeah, it's so versatile. It, it's 
Honestly, uh, I, I mentioned my favorite spells earlier as, as Beam and Wheel. I left out Black Hole. Black Hole's probably right oh, yeah. up there as well, actually, if not higher than, than Wheel. I mean, for me, I think Black Hole is my second favorite card behind Colossus. Yeah. And I mean, that's that's really saying something, too, because Colossus is really, really up there for you. That's, that's a pretty high gap between that and other cards normally. Colossus is the best minion in the game, obviously. I mean, of course. There we go. Again, now, I don't think uh, that uh, Howling Moon hit that did not. I mean, no. very, very tight timings there. And honestly, I, I mentioned the HP not mattering generally uh, early on, and they're they're dead even in XP. They're even in XP. But Deadshot does have a nice HP lead, and if he could sneak a large push in, if he could get a big push in and kill Dirian before this goes further, that'd be really amazing for him. Yeah, I mean, uh, Deadshot, I mean, again, I think this is a situation where Deadshot is almost in a position where it's his game to lose, considering the HP lead he can, he can quickly have here. Yeah, that and black again, hole from him there was a little bit sad, though. It doesn't save the golem there, and, he, uh... You can't always hit, unfortunately. Yeah, Very now, we're, we're trying to see, I mean, this is kind of like a, this could be a turning point for Dirian where he evens it out. I mean, that was a pretty nice push he had set up, but... Yeah, I mean, and, and once that Golem hits for how much per shot? Not completely sure, but hits for enough. A lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah, Mathematical just... equations, right yep. here. That's, that's your math. Uh, when it starts at 40, it gets plus 6 per... So, yeah, so, you know. yeah, a lot. Yeah, that, that's adequate. That's accurate. So I, I could give you the real number, but honestly, it's a not lot. I mean, here is why I feel Meme Storm is such a good card as well in these sort of matchups. Almost hits its own there, but uh, Shield said again, I think with the Black Hole, which is really good. But yeah, the Meme Storm there just takes care of the Shrine, hits face a little bit, and takes care of the Golem. Oh yeah. Stun Lancers though, now, also such a good counter card versus big Golems. Yeah, Stun Lancers are really good. Howling Moon's really good. I, I feel like Dirian has really good tools here. <laughs> he does, he does. The Meme Storm. It's almost like it has two of them at this point. I guess it just cycles um, fast. Also, Bridge Shrine in Dirian's list is, uh, is really good for him. And he has a small XP lead now. Not anything massive, just like a 5 XP lead. But 5 XP can, can make a difference. He hits Mana Frenzy first, he gets the bridges for a bit. It could make a difference. Yeah, I mean, every XP matters. And, I mean, now he's not at a critical HP point either. I mean, not, he is now is far from any sort of danger, lethal range. So he probably doesn't care too much that he's down a little bit in HP. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's honestly not in critical range. He's in a great spot, I think, HP-wise. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the 5 XP lead is gone, though. Deadshot had a nice set of golems coming through the bot side here, and it's evened out. The, the, and... the thing is, I feel like in a middle mirror match, like, the amount of thousands of HP that is going to be traded is just insane, right? Because you heal, heal, both sides continually heal each other. So, like, you, you like, there's just maybe 10,000 HP per side, realistically. I know, there's, there's an insane amount, honestly. The, the number just climbs throughout the match, too. The longer it goes, the higher the HP. Uh, we're seven minutes in. Deadshot's 5 XP up and 5 away from Mana Frenzy now. But uh, Dirian's got a nice... Gonna, I mean... Cruising friends here, 5 XP before uh, your opponent. I doubt it's gonna have any real impact on the outcome of the game. I, I especially, I, honestly, I, I felt like it had a chance to, but at this point, right now, with with the look on the board, it, it didn't make a difference at all. And there's Mana Frenzy for Dirian. Um, I think Dirian does have a slight edge here in Mana Frenzy, though. He does have this bridge shrine, and yeah. honestly, that that could make the difference for him. So, chat, we're almost eight minutes in, and the game is just starting. Yeah, this is. This is the real beginning of the Milloween Mirror matchup, actually. The last eight minutes were just the prequel, you know, that's I mean, it's yeah, just the a cutscene. Really. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the like cutscene really... leading up. Main story begins here. Yeah, um, and that being said, with the main story beginning here, I really feel like this is Dirian's game. I think the bridge shrines are going to be more than enough for him to, to win out the extra mana from its insane. Um, Meme Storm might help. I mean, here's where the Meme Storm can really help that shot if he's able to get a few bridge shrines and golem hits with, with one or two of those. It can help a lot. And with Meme Storm, I don't think he's going to be too threatened HP wise, uh, golem wise, because he can just clear a lot. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, just one mistake and you're dead. 
Ah, oh, look at these skies. They're so clear. So beautiful out today. You see all this I clear? Mean, this clear sky? It's dark outside my my window, but in this game, it, they're so uh, clear and bright that I'm starting to be snow blind. Starting to be snow blind, absolutely. Honestly, it's it's a beautiful day here in Minion Masters. It's a beautiful, it is, beautiful it map. Nine shining. minutes. We have hit the nine minute mark now. In the past minute, we have seen quite a lot of action, actually. And uh, you're seeing Dirian with a with a very decisive lead right now, I feel. Um, you can't rely on, on XP as a, as a sign of a lead anymore at this point of the game. You can look at HP and see the dead shots dipping down a bit. Yeah, However, that can quickly Yeah, I can see back. now that Dirian is full HP, Deadshot is half HP, and it, doesn't, it is definitely the case that Dirian has the has the sort of the, the ball in his court right now. He uh, he's, he's controlling the matchup a bit, I feel. Yeah, I definitely, I, I really feel like the bridge shrines are enough to give him that, that edge that he needed here. Yeah, I mean, if if that child would have had wild card meme storms, then I feel he could, would have been able to defend way more, because then he has one meme storm for the defense and one for the shrines. Mm -hmm. Then again, then I imagine he would just, Dirian would place them separately. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, at this point, I feel that, uh, as you said, Dirian will have the edge, and I think that in about 10 minutes time, you'll win the game. Ah, yeah, 10 minutes. All right, two two minutes into the actual game now. We we said it was the real game starting at eight minutes, but two minutes in, and you can see uh, at two minutes into the game, Deadshot has dipped even lower. Dirian is no longer spamming out his clear skies. Uh, he slowed down on that a bit because he was in a good position. He was taking a nice advantage there, and he didn't yeah, want to, you know. So. Yeah, I mean, at full HP himself, and with, you know, a nice lead holding both bridges, uh, keeping control, why should he use clear skies just to heal Deadshot and Deadshot's units? When he has more out there, you know, he can kind of overpower. Hey, at uh, this point, the only reason to clear skies is to do some semi-VM. Yeah, I mean, honestly, there there are you could make a case for certain heals on the golems at times. Yeah, some, um, some. Yeah. But but in general, I mean, at, at this point, most of the healing is going to be coming from Deadshot's hand because Dirian's yeah. just trying to, to maybe when close you out the game. That, I mean, when you're not using your player skies, you're basically forcing your opponent to use their player skies because they need HP, and you also benefit from that. So basically, you're getting a free heal time after time after time. Yeah. It's just going to continually. Give you Deadshot, more, more of an advantage than you already had. Deadshot's trying so hard to fight for this bottom bridge. He, he just has to concede it for now. He can't win this bottom bridge fight. He couldn't get the advantage here. And but here comes the again, Magma Storm coming out. It's such a good card to answer with, even though it all missed almost because he's great. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was it was still it was still a very nice attempt. We're now about to hit 12 minutes. I think the game will be over relatively soon, actually. Dirian is still in such a strong position, and this honestly, might... I think it, it speaks volumes at how well he played this uh, in the mana frenzy state of the game, where he hasn't had a clear skies in quite a long time, and he's still keeping this advantage. Uh, he's still keeping this up, and, and Deadshot's down to 500 health now, and he's in so much danger. This might be our longest game of the tournament so far. At least and the casted one. Maybe. Close enough, anyway. Here it goes. The last ah, tick of he's alive. damage. He's alive. Chat, 12 minutes and 18 seconds, folks. Now that, chat, that deserves a clap and a clap. In a surprising turn of events, uh... Milloween actually wins the game. Um, and that she does. Quite stunned by that. But uh, yeah, I mean, Darian here, the winning, the the winning deciding factor, I would say, was the XP shrine. Yeah, I, I feel like the XP shrines really made a big deal. I mean, once he reached Frenzy, it gave him so much more free XP, uh, or mana in this case. And uh, Deadshot just, I mean, yeah, he had the Meme Storm to maybe counter, for example, the, the Shrines, but he, he couldn't because he needed to focus using them on uh, the Golems. If he would have had two of them, then yeah, maybe he could have uh, could have pushed back. But is this for the last, like, five, four or five minutes of that game? At least the f last four minutes, it felt like... Tyrion always had the golems on the enemy side of the board, and Deadshot just had to continually defend. He didn't really get any chance to push for the last minutes at all. He just, on his side, that's that. Yeah. 
So, okay, one Milo down, one to go. Do you think you will see Milo win again from Deadshot? Do you think he I... wins revenge? I feel like... <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Milloween from him again. Um, with the, the other Milloween out, he can he can play it in. He can get the, you know, might get a nice little win there with it. Um, uh, unexpectedly sets you from Dirian if he anticipates a Milloween again. Look at from that. Uh, Look at that Hagen Gnome prediction coming out there. That's the Setsu from Dirian. And uh, there's the dead shot on the Milloween. Run that back with the Milloween. But well, Jiren is not using the pink Setsu skin, so I'm still a bit disappointed. Uh, honestly, me too. And uh, let's see, does he have Red Golem this time? Probably not. I swear though, at one point we have to see it. I mean, if, if it's gonna be in some, I mean, either loses final, or final, we have to see the Red Golem at some point. Come on now. One day. And uh, well, once again, Defensive Chopper is not a cleaver counter, as you can clearly see on the board there. It does deal some damage to it though. Sets a jump already, fairly aggressive. Might get a cleaver. Sh no, it is blocked. But that's a very dangerous combo there. If you try to play, say, like a one mana cost minion there, right, that Sesu jumps and lands, and as the cleaver is running in, if you time it perfectly so that the Setsu lands and kills the low mana minion, uh, and do then doesn't block the cleaver so that then the cleaver hits face. That's obviously really, really good value. Then again, that that's a lot of sort of luck and or skill involved there. Bit of both, anyhow. Yeah. And uh, look at the XP lead for Darien. Oh my. And it's, HP is uh, well, really. It's really huge this early on. Uh, that's, I mean, that's a big we're XP talking, lead. We're talking double XP here, basically. Almost yeah. anyway. That's pretty impressive. And, uh... I mean, from a HP standpoint, it's not too important since there's clear skies here for the Milloween. But still, you don't want to drop below 2,000 at least for perk 2. Cleaver again coming in. It's going to be blocked, I assume. It is not. No. It's Cleaver hit in. And uh, this is a lot of damage. How long? Uh, all the units. 1,100 HP for Deadshot right now. 900 fireball. HP. There's a fireball. That's 700 HP. Deadshot is at 700 HP two minutes into the game. And 945 HP, skies. two minutes into the game. He has clear skies. That is this. This is Milloween. There are clear skies. But still here, but still, this is a pretty. This is really, really in favor of Darian now. I would say. I mean, I would say that one. If I'm gonna have him have to play a different master against Milloween, I would play Setsu. And uh, yeah, Setsu is doing very well here. Another few aggro jumps and a few cleaver hits, and Deadshot is very, very dead. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's... Dirian's in a great spot. He's showing uh, how to answer the Clear Skies Milloween. You you have to... Yeah, just kill them. Just kill it. Just kill it with fire. If, if the Milloween dies, she can't heal with Clear Skies. Nah, you know, it's ah. that simple, you know? I mean, there um, as well, you see a play that I don't really agree with. He's playing the Defenso to sort of stop Cleaver. The Cleaver swings once at the defenso but technically would like two uh, swings to kill it but ends up not needing to as well which means that you just you use your oh, five no. mana oh to just, not really counter. just in time and and watch it watch as he continues to die here that shot is losing out there's the fireball there's 35 that's dead yep now chat this is how you play against Milloween. you just kill them without mercy before they hit the perk three and then you, you clap. Oof, that was a, you know what? I feel better now. I, I'm happy now. I'm, I'm smiling here. What about you, Apples? Honestly, I, uh, I really like that. That was really good. I like it. That makes me happy. Um, honestly, I like Clear Skies Milloween. I'm I'm in that boat. I'm I'm literally the worst kind of person. I like the deck. Literal scum. I see. How I is. I'm a terrible person. Clearly, um, I All just right. really like control decks and I like uh like slow decks. Uh, but I also absolutely love watching good aggro play and watching it get shut down. And Darian showcased really well how to shut it down there. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, as I said, I think that Setsu is one of the best, if not the best, counter to a Clear Skies Milwin there, just because of the aggro, if you have an aggro deck setup, obviously. And I just, I love mm -hmm. the Smork, I love Setsu. I think that was a very s s straightforward textbook way of, okay, this is how you play aggro Setsu and just DPS the enemy down effectively. I mean, in under, I mean, you have one game, 12 minutes, 18, and then the second game, three and a half. Well, we're, we're getting some uh, some pacing here, chat. We're uh, pacing. We're uh, we're charging up. So now, what do you think is gonna happen? Do you think it's gonna? Um, I think Deadshot's gonna play his mill. <laughs> I, maybe there. maybe not. Maybe he doesn't though. Maybe maybe he mixes it up. Maybe he doesn't play the Milloween. Maybe maybe he feels like he needs to get off of it because it's just not winning him the game. Uh, maybe he feels like he switches decks and he tries to get a win with a different deck and then come back to it later. You know, I mean, um, Darian Darian doesn't have Milloween or Setsu, but he still has uh, he still has Volko and Apep, right? Um, and I think his if he plays that aggro game as well with Volko, he could he could win with Volko into the Milloween as well. Um, yeah, I mean I think I mean if I'm dead shot here and it's like okay, I've lost two with Milloween, I'm a bit depressed. And what decks does Deering have left? Okay, Apep. Okay, I'm not like a huge favorite versus that as Milloween, I would say. I mean, sure you have a good good enough chance, but not an, an amazing favorite by any any means. Apep is good enough himself. And then do you really want to play against an aggro Volko? That's Milloween. We saw well, it worked out last game when he played aggro. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, I, I mean, I guess I would expect maybe Dirian goes Apep and then Deadshot goes maybe Apep as well. And oh, no. actually, we have Volko. Volko for Dirian. And <sighs> we don't have Milloween. We have, we have the other, the yeah, other we, lady. We're at least, we were at least right that, uh, I dead shot is he's done with the Milloween. He's he's yeah. done. But yeah, I mean, I mean, I have to love Darian here. It's like I could play Apep. What? Um, I love Wolko and I'm gonna play Wolko. So good man. He gets ten points from me and a cookie that will be sent in his mailbox. <clears throat> Whew. So. How do you think the outlook in, for this game is? Do you think that either player has an advantage here based on deck? Do you think the Volko has an advantage? Or... I give the advantage to Dirian. Um, okay. I give the the advantage to the the more aggro Volko. Um, although Deadshot has uh, has shown the, the good ability to play this Morelia. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, last Morelia Volko matchup we saw, which was with Deadshot as well, I believe, right? He uh, was, yeah. barely, barely held on with a single ping's worth of health. So we might see a rematch of that, which would be uh, impressive if he manages to uh, pull the same rab rabbit out of the hat twice in a row. But, but yeah, I would give the initial... Uh, Advantage to uh, do Darian here. We'll have to see how it develops. I mean, Darian has the XP lead so far as well, and yeah. the HP lead. Um, honestly, I yeah, I, I would give the edge to Darian. I don't think it's a huge edge though. Um, not not huge. I mean, it's too early to really give conclusive uh, thoughts here, but initial small edge at least I would give to Darian. And uh, now, if we you see the pings coming here rapidly, if we can just keep these early game pings coming in quick succession, yeah. then Dedra is going to lose a lot of HP very quickly, and he's going to start crying. Now, now here's the question, okay? Uh, during our last our last Morelia Volko matchup, where Deadshot yeah. played Morelia, okay? He, uh, he was on one ping's HP for a considerable amount of time, okay? Yeah, he was. And then, after a while of that, he discovered that one of Morelia's unholy bargain, Book of the Dead option, actually heals him now that do you think true. that he remembers that it heals him do you think that that'll come into play here in this match perhaps? i mean or... he, he would have to know right i mean he probably plays the master enough and he must be quite aware of that fact but at the same time you look at the hp pool like i mean I right like now it's, game, it's looking real bad i mean it, i feel like in this game in mean, uh, this game during got richburn way earlier than uh than the other Volko did the previous match plus Mm -hmm. Deadshot is a good bit lower in HP as well in, in comparison I, to the last matchup. I really feel like the difference in Volko's here is uh, Dirian has 
a much... I, I don't want to say better. I feel like he has a better deck, though, for grabbing bridges and, and you know, also kind of just, like, holding the bridge, like, and getting it. Like, I, I feel like the other Volko list didn't have quite the same set of tools. Yeah, that's true. And also, I mean, here, like, I mean, I feel like Durin has just the counters he needs. Okay, if the... I mean, if Morelia plays Skeletons, you have Bridge Burn. If he plays Defenso, just play a Cleaver. If, I mean, so he just has the cards he needs, I feel. And, uh, yeah, that's cheap enough cycle as well that... I mean, he's just pinging... I mean, one big advantage I think Durian has in comparison to the previous Morelia the Volko matchup is that Durian is way more aggressive in the early game and is pinging or using his afterburner way more effectively mm -hmm. uh, and in much higher uh, in a much, much higher degree than uh, was the case in the previous matchup. And you see yeah. this warrior pinging away in the face, other 300. And, and Dem Daggerfall. Dem shots down to 205 health right now. This is... Bridge burn as well, massive value. Yo, we're looking at one burst of, of afterburner ticks and it will be a dead dead shot. Oh. Plus, in this case, Therian has shock rock, he has dagger fall, which alone is like 100 damage, plus Astos in hand in a second here, so... And there's the bridge, that's dead. gonna be game just like that, he gets the bridge and... Deadshot yeah, doesn't just... have mana frenzy to, to keep up here to hold the bridge like he did the last matchup. No, he just doesn't have any any way to recover really. I mean, once he loses too much health there, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm very sure that that Durian is, is like first one with a non milo pick. I mean, we we could see a little bit of a mix up here. It could be a bit of a mind games thing. You yeah. know? Or, I'd say maybe or not. Stormbringer Setsu, something Showtime. like that potentially. <clears throat> or how about Red how about Morelia Volko? <sighs> or that I, I I give up on guessing really. I mean, yeah, it's, it's hard with that's okay. like this. It is. No, it really is, honestly. And I mean, if it's if it's this hard as casters, as people on the outside looking in, right? We have all the information there. We've watched them all day. We've seen we've seen everything here. Um, imagine how it is for the players too, right? To to be on that spot and be like, yeah, I need to play something that'll be yeah, this. Like the endless mind game. Okay, yeah. if he plays this, but then I play this, but then he plays this again, and then the endless cycle just keeps going. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and I mean, uh, uh, again, I mean, do you want to give Darian the slight edge again here with another welcome Morelia? Um, honestly, I I kind of do. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent this time. I, I think I'd still give Darian the advantage here, yeah. Uh, though overall, because is uh, Zinu still I, playing twins in his uh, Morelia, by the way? Zinu is still playing twins, yeah. All right, and Hound now as well? it's it's worth. Honestly, we didn't we didn't mention this earlier. I, I don't think we talked about this earlier. Um, but I want to mention really quickly. I I don't think Zinyu has an activator for twins. Unless uh, until he has the 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 perk, the Morelia uh, perk. Oh yeah, that might be the case. I forgot how they changed the card. <laughs> yeah, because um, Shards Rock Twins is a eight cost. That activates if the last card you played was a five mana spell, um, oh. and he is running Howling Moon and Fireball, so neither of those are five mana spells um, until he gets the Book of the Dead uh, and lowers the cost of the spell by two on Howling Moon. So that's literally just there to combo with Howling Moon. Um, so it's a five head play, is what you're saying? Yeah, it's it's funny. Uh, it's funny because back in the day. When Morelia was first coming out, uh, I, I think I'm allowed to, to say it now, when she was on PTR, uh, one of the first things I did, actually, I was like, yo, twins with the, the reduced cost? That'll be really cool. Um, and I tried that a bit. So it's cool to see it, you know, getting played here. It's definitely, definitely interesting. But also, if that's one of your main combos, is that is that maybe going to be, I mean, that's 13 mana. Is that maybe too expensive against an aggressive Volko? Um, of course, as I'm saying this, you know, Volko is down to 1500 health already. Yeah, I mean, this game we're seeing almost a complete reversal from the previous game. This time, Morelia is in the HP lead and in the X... Ah, almost XP lead. Spoke too soon. I mean, he was in the XP lead before, but now even in XP. But yeah, so this time, Morelia is not feeling threatened at all in comparison. Yeah, I, uh, and I just, I just fell into the classic trap as a caster and there. Where I was so focused on something outside of the game, I missed 
the massive lead that Sinyu is building HP wise and uh, is continuing to build here. There's the spirit from the, the book on the Succubus and the Nether Bat. And Dyrian's just getting hammered here. This is. Yeah, I mean, he's, 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 he's almost. I mean, he's just being completely out of destroyed almost at this point. I mean, also with the Incubus and the Twins there. I mean, if Dyrian plays Plasma Marines, Incubus jumps on him. If he plays Thin, Incubus jumps on him. I mean, yep. it's, I mean has, he has some really good counter cards to, to a lot of Dyrian's uh, minions. Yeah, I, honestly, it's it's really interesting. I really like this uh, this list from Sinia here, and I feel like he's playing this very, very well. And this is yeah. certainly uh, certainly his game at this point. Um, yeah, here comes another push with with wolves, with twins, and even another bat to just spice it up. There's a fireball, so he only needs 150 damage to Durian's face. The cleaver so, kills the suck or the incubus this time, and, and then dies, but it doesn't yeah, matter. That, that is a very properly timed <laughs> GG. Just as the ending blow hits. Okay, now, now I know as, why. I uh, you know, that's I, I fell into the trap there. I was so focused on the combo and talking about the combo, I missed some of the action there. Uh, but honestly, the combo is really cool, and I feel like Zinia just played that, that very well. He played that matchup really well. And he's showing that even if twins have been nerfed, they're still not necessarily bad. So yeah, they still they still have a use. Maybe. I do remember the, the twins in every deck days, though. Ah, the times. My least favorite period of Minion Masters uh, would be the Ravager double Rammer Ball twin meta. Oh, yeah. uh, fun times, fun times. The the only time that I've played the game and actually thought about quitting because I was like, I, this isn't worth playing anymore. This isn't it's fun. Only time. Oh, wow, you're a, you're a patient yeah. one. <laughs> I, I had a lot of patience, yeah. I, I, and then that, that meta happened and I was like, I no longer want to be here. Um, but yeah. you know they they did change it up and we're we're not in that meta anymore and yeah uh, I mean depending on how you feel about the game at any given time a lot of people don't like the meta in some shape or form. Um, but... Definitely, I mean I still remember the rabid pr prowler. Fun uh, are, you, oh, right. are you referencing the rabid prowler initial meta or the month of rabid prowler being bugged and still being a rabid prowler uh, that was like absurd? both were equally. Uh... <clears throat> yeah. yeah, I I personally was more upset after it was fixed and then bugged, but you know. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, it's just like insult to injury. We fixed yeah. it. Yeah. Debated. Nah, uh, you know, but it happens. It happens. And it happens. and honestly, uh, bugs bugs are a part of any game. Um, it'd be cool to to program a game and have zero bugs, but you know, it happens. Oh. And uh, they've done a good job of wrapping things up and changing them out a bit. And uh, we're getting into the next game, and it's Rappo versus Volko. So you use Rappo versus Tyrion's that, Volko. That's the first time today we're seeing that specific matchup, I think. I don't yeah. think we've seen a Rappo Volko yet. So I, that, that's quite I, interesting. I don't think so. Do you? Who do you favor in this matchup, master-wise? Well, thin, well, I, I still am of the belief that Rappo is one of the weakest masters in the game overall, perk-wise. So I will always generally give a slight light advantage to Volko here, but at the same time, uh, at the same time, seeing how Senior has played his Rathbo, uh this tournament, I, I, I mean, I would say it's close to a 50-50. Especially since you know this Nether Bat. Yes, you know, I know this Nether Bat. You know this Nether Bat. Oh, that's uh. I mean, it's working so hard. It's nice like manually fly up and down and hit him. That but, that uh, Nether Bat is a champion. Something I will say here is that Durin is playing a real cleaver, for example, here, and the rat bow will obviously counter that very, very heavily, effectively. So uh, some edge here will go to Sinew based on those factors. But yeah, I would still give a slight edge to the Durian, maybe a 60-40, or maybe even 55-45. But yeah, I think it's going to be a close matchup, and you see already that Sinu does have an HP lead and XP lead. So I would, yeah. you would expect Ratbo to generally have an XP lead, right? Yeah, I mean, and it's a very slight XP lead. It's not a super big deal here. Also, um, do you see the debate there? I mean, I feel every time that Sinu has like buff busters and he has the Bannerman, like people get debated time and time again. Yeah, honestly, it's it's pretty pretty good feeling for Zinyu to get that out there and have that work like that. 
Um, a lot of times you, you feel the necessity to, to try to deal with them quickly and then yeah, I mean, there's like, the banner man. I mean, it's, it's just like a, a good, a really good player like Deeran, for example. I mean, he knows that there's a banner man there now. He's well aware, but, but at the same time, even if he knows that and he knows that he's playing as a player that's so good that it's not really going to be taken by surprise or let those buzzers die and just always shield them from the daggerfall. He still wants to make the play so badly, cause he I mean, he's like in his genes, right? I see the busters, yeah. I dagger fall. Cause you almost have these automatic reactions. I mean, I know when I played, like every single day, I was on end, right? I mean, I had oh, yeah. these like set sort of just reactions in my mind. Like I see certain cards, I play certain cards. Yeah, and I mean, it's hard to get out of that mindset sometimes. Yeah, no, it, it really is. That right there is is how you play around that. That's that's a Definitely. showcase of how you deal with that because clearly you can't just you know dagger fall it so that was really well done by Dirian there to to deal with those yeah um, you just clear up the top there while well, temporarily anyway so yeah that's i mean that's how it, that's the difference between a good player and a really good player as well is that you're able to adapt on the fly and just around every single turn or every single corner uh throughout all your games if you're not able to adapt and keep making the same mistake more than once then you're gonna lose with way more games than you win if you if you had adapted oh yeah i mean honestly winning winning isn't just about making the the best play every time but learning to to make you know the better play in general like yeah, I mean, it's always about, you have to adapt and you have to see, okay, my opponent is doing this, I have to alter my playstyle to counter, counter that, counter it basically, uh, you know, yeah. just re-counter, whatever you want to call it. So, so yeah, so the, the top players will always sort of, sort of have that continual improvement during games, which is also really nice to see. I mean, there you see that Deering played the, uh, the Daggerfall because he knew that Zinu had played Bannerman already and didn't have it in hand. Yeah, yeah, and honestly, it's it's little things like that, paying attention to those moments and seeing the window. Yeah, it's like, a good, good player as well will know that, okay, I'm, I'm well aware, I'm 100% sure you haven't cycled back to that card yet, because it's not possible. Plus, they, they know how, how heavy their deck is and all that. Also, third perk with Darien. Yeah, um, now, one of the big things with, with perk 3 Volko, right, a lot of times is, uh, especially in a Cleaver Volko deck, you see the power of Cleaver, especially with Rage, but against Rappo, it's not going to mean as much. Uh, I mean, yeah, with definitely. the other units, it'll make a difference. With Cleaver specifically, it, it won't matter as much, but... But as you saw there, well, seeing it's getting really, really low here, but as you saw that Cleaver actually and lower. hit uh, a, a cursed, uh, or uh, the, and the skeleton that's, thing, and then... that's it right there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I was, I mean, I did give the edge to Volko and I ended up being correct there, technically. Yeah. So I'm, I'm proud of myself. Tap on the shoulder. Thank you, self. Honestly, I, I'd give you a pat on the back for that one. Yeah, that was, that was well done. But yeah, I mean, definitely, they, I mean, you can easily see how the game can play, especially if Darian hadn't been behind the controls there and hadn't been any other player, especially maybe a less experienced player, you can very easily see how the game can turn around the other way, so. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it definitely, there was an opportunity for both players there. It wasn't an incredibly one-sided matchup. Um, so, Morelia's out, and Volko's out. Morelia for Z, Volko for Darian. Uh, both players... Still have Milloween. Um, we have Apep for Darian still. What you... do you expect? Hmm. Well, once, okay, for once, it's the finals. Darian, okay, I beg of you, give me my Setsu Red Golem. For the love of God. Oh, you, you don't just want uh... Setsu, you want the Red Golem Setsu. You, you want it out there. Yeah, you're I mean, ready. Why ask for one one out of two when you can get two out of two, right? But I would say that Darian could quite likely play Setsu either with Red Golem or not, hopefully with, and expect to go up against a Milloween, for example. Uh huh. Or just go up against Stormbringer as well, right? Against both of those, I would be comfortable with the Setsu deck here, or just Setsu in general. So to me, that doesn't seem too uh, too unlikely or too Ill illogical there. Okay, understand. I mean, that's I think that's reasonable. 
then again, maybe Darian just thinks, you know what? It's Milloween time. It's Milloween time. It's high noon, you know? Okay. I mean, it's it's definitely a possibility, also. Do you think uh, an APEP will, will be coming out yet? Uh, I don't... Man, honestly, it's it's such a an interesting world, because honestly, with, with Milloween on the table for both of them, it's so hard to predict what they're going to play. Um, I don't know if we're going to see the APEP yet. I mean, you wouldn't want to have the apple up against the milloween potentially right because you wouldn't necessarily be favored in that situation uh probably not so you maybe you want to save your apep until you know the milloween is maybe out of the out of the game or out of the matchup potentially yeah because then it's in a way better position against the remaining decks of uh of sinew in that case mm -hmm. so i mean I can hope at least and say that we'll have a set to Red Golem versus a Stormbringer laser turret, or uh, I guess. Or. There's guys. What if it's what if it's Ratbo versus Apep? Well, like it that. is. Well, I guess. I mean, I'm not too surprised that Sinu decides to be like, okay, let's do another Ratbo because he has sort of stuck to his guns in the past in this tournament as well. I feel. Uh, I mean, he's stuck this deck two or three times, even though he's lost with it. So, not too surprising there. And Rappo, his Rappo deck is good. Though, I mean, is he not using Beam in it still? I mean, it has, does he always sideboard it out? Uh, it would appear so, yeah. Sad days. But yeah, I mean, I guess Therian is happy enough now. Oh, that's uh, No, a, he, that's he does card. have the Beam. He does have the Beam. I am. Oh. Yeah, he cycled around to it. He does have it. Sorry, he, he didn't have it on screen yet. Right. But now he does. Um, that is a card. Oh god, QC cover chat exploded. Uh, so wait, what? So I guess that's the card I got from the present, obviously. Because that's not anywhere else. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, do you think Deirian is happy here that he did not face the Milloween with his APEP and instead face the uh, I would, I would think he's happy about it, probably, yeah. I mean, it, it's got to feel better to not be against it, because um, I don't think you want to. Uh, that being said, I, I also feel like Xenu's Rappo is really good and uh, has shown Blast to be really Mancer, good in though. long matches. Um, the Blastmancer... Oh. Good news there. The Which is, I think... I mean, now Deirian knows, and uh, happy days. I I feel like uh, if Darian stabilizes a bit, gets back into it, and, and isn't massively behind an XP, I, I feel like this... Is the Blastmancer just in his deck? Uh, what do you... he, I mean, he... I think so. He he has yeah, it he, sideboarded, he so he probably yeah. I'm pretty put sure it, he yeah. sideboarded it. Which okay, is uh, so so he, he might have expected to go up against the raffle then maybe, or he, he thought it was a possibility. Yeah. Uh, and that. and with that, I officially, I honestly, if Darian stabilizes, he has Blastmancer versus Rappo. That's that's really that's pretty really good. big. And also, yeah, I mean, he, I mean, he has good. a, I mean, he has good. I mean, his first perk with three swarmers is not bad, and the three mana Shihu or Tranquil Shihu is not bad either. He has a four mana, uh, God, what's it called? Legendary Monkey. The, uh, yep, that one. Plus, I mean, well, I guess Shen a six, Stormstrike. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and also mm -hmm. a six mana exploding, but minion. Oh, he is the. <laughs> it's not bad either. Yeah, so he's down. He's down quite a bit in XP. Um, but again, it, it's really just about hitting the point where he can stabilize, right? If he can, if he can find a point where he can, yeah. before he loses too much HP, uh, it's worth mentioning he he can't lose too much HP. Zinyu does have Beam, um, so if Yurian drops to like you know 600 or something, that's that's really Beam territory there for Zinyu. He can start laying in the beams if the game goes long. A two mana um, healing shrine, I guess, can be okay, but not necessarily the best card here. But yeah, I mean, Dirion is definitely a bit low here on HP in comparison to Sinew, but he does have his totem now, so he's probably not too worried about it. Yeah, he's not gonna feel that awful about it. Uh, again, though, it really it just depends on if he can actually stop bleeding out, like. 
Being yeah. a little lower on HP is okay, taking a bit of damage is okay, you have totem, but once you hit a certain point, when you're playing against somebody with beam, uh, especially somebody with a 40 XP lead at this point, uh, on the way to that, Frenzy. Uh, do you see that heal shrine value, by the way? Heal oh, that heal shrine is excellent. And, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was some good value there. Not very defensive on bottom to deal with uh, Shihu, but... I mean, I feel like... I mean, I feel like... Tyrion's gonna be able to stabilize here, even though he's behind in XP, which is kind of expected to get the Rathbow. Rathbow's, I mean, Rathbow's third perk and first perk, to me, still is, they aren't that strong to me. I just, I just don't find them that, uh, that, that powerful. Yeah. And once uh, Tyrion here hits perk three in a minute or, wow, 30 seconds maybe, depending, then he might be able to outvalue him, just simply outvalue him, you know? Yeah, he, he very well could, I mean. That's uh, that's really the the turning point, I guess. Is uh, the the APAP perk three could be the deciding thing. If he gets something really good, it could be enough to swing this around and and help him. Uh, again, it's it's all about just finding the rhythm and stabilizing here. Like he he needs to not bleed out. If he takes like a, a bit more damage, it could be really bad. Overall, I I feel like Dirian's in a great spot though. Once he hits that perk three and uh, with Blast Mancer here, I, I feel like he's in a really good spot. Beam that's Doom a, comes out to that's a really Blast good beam there. And it also uh, activates the Reckonator there, so the and this Reckonator And destroys pops. everything. Yep, that's so it, good. it wrecks, you know? It wrecks. Uh, Flightless Dragons? Is that, that's his perk 3, right? Is that would perk? seem to be his perk 3. That's excellent for Dirian. I think that's like, it's it's less good against the Rappo here with a lot of these smaller units. And Sinew does have defense all day. But, but it's, a, it's a good card. I mean, defense, or uh, Flightless Dragons is a really good card. Yeah, I mean, uh... You don't say no to shrimps. You don't no. say no to eat them, and you don't say no to play them. Oh, absolutely not. You you don't say no to that. You appreciate that. You respect it. And the beam is really that's gonna do it here for the Reckonator again, and yeah, it's I mean, gonna pop the the Tranquil Shiho the, there. The beam value. I mean, obviously, it's, well, actually no. Free spear throwers. Yeah, we go. Oh, you I'm got blind, you got spear throwers for free. Okay. I thought it was uh, just wild card dragons, but no. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, you're uh, yep. I, I say I'm not I on that two. side, so I was just taking the oh, yeah. guess there. I, I thought I saw two of them, so I was like, oh yeah, I think it's wall card dragons, but no, it was actually fear throwers. Yeah, and uh, Zinyu's Zinyu's up 30 XP here, but we see Dirian starting to claw back into this now, and honestly, I mean, Zinyu is playing his beam pretty well at least, especially. I mean, he's gotten a bit of a sort of a saving grace that uh, Dirian has gotten so many sort of singular. Uh, high value minions that are nice beam targets. Reckonator, though, just cleans house. Except against the defense, though. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, Reckonator, pretty okay card. Um, the beams have really been good against it. It's really strong against it. I, uh, you know, activating it there and then. It does seem to have a lot of HP, though. Yeah, um, speaking about a lot of HP, can we talk about how Zinyu doesn't have a lot of HP anymore? He's down to uh, 300 yeah, I, there. I noticed, and both players are close to Frenzy, but I don't think it's going to matter in this game. I Yeah, Zinyu's going to hit Frenzy first by by a, a bit here. He's 10 XP ahead. He's going to hit it by a little margin. Uh, but Dirian has Blast matter, Mancer. And, and he does have Daggerfall as well for some DPS if he needs to. Yeah, so... Between Blast Mancer and that, and then he has like just general good cards here. That's 250 yeah. for Zinyu. There's a dagger there, and uh, like you know he has double snipers out, and and that's really good. The they snipers didn't die are... either. Nope, they're they're still alive. Uh, and here comes a Blast Mancer now. Beam really well placed there. Deals with the Blast Mancer. Both these snipers are still alive here. He gets another Both. card out to protect them too. Both have friends as well. But yep, and there's a third happened? now. You know what happens when you have a Blast Mancer and you reach Frenzy, right? Yep. It's uh, it's really there's another Blast Mancer played out for Darien and especially honestly, with the Rathbow, it's, it's such a sad ending. It's like <laughs> prepare yep. to be blasted away. <laughs> uh, and that's a pretty okay beam from Zinyu, but honestly, Mana Frenzy to Mana Frenzy here, the beam isn't doing enough for him. And you need need to take Bridge. If Beam took Bridge, maybe, but it does not. 
and that will probably, well, it can quickly be the end of uh, Sinyu yeah, this is, and his Rappo. This is certainly going to be game for Darian here. Sinyu, with the Rappo, loses to the Darian Apep. Well, Apep is good. Who would thunk? Uh, not only, okay, so it, it's worth mentioning. I, yes, Apep is good. Random cards are good. Um, he got the Reckonator from the Future Present, or was it the Future Past? Uh, either way, discounted. He got uh, Future Past, he got the Reckonator, and he got a, uh, a, a ghost thingy for free. With the okay, ghost. so so that the, the second part doesn't matter. The Reckonator versus, uh, versus Rappo, really good. Uh, Blastmancer, honestly, though. D despite the RNG elements of the deck there... Um, Despite the RNG elements of the Darian list there, sideboarding in the Blastmancer was so smart. Like, actually, though, um, it was really big. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, versus Rappo, that's that's crazy. That's really good. Um, so that's, that's just a bit of sideboard right there, like, showcasing I mean, how sideboarding can actually affect a match in a big way. Yeah, and... Well, both these players actually have Blastmancer in their sideboard, and I mean, I suppose both the players know that. You know what? I'm just gonna have the Blastmancer in the sideboard. It's like you know, if I'm playing Rappo, for example, or a matchup where it's relevant, I'll just put it in. And uh, Deren did did that to uh, an exemplary effect. It worked quite well, and that's a that's a win for the for the man. Well, no more Apep. What do you think is gonna happen now then? Um, is it time for the Milloween? It might be time for the Milloween. Uh, I mean... Darian... So Darian doesn't have, uh, what? He doesn't have Apep or Volko. He could still play Setsu. He might, he might veto the Milloween and just play Setsu. And yeah, he mean, does. I... Yeah, because I think that Setsu will just perform well against, uh, the decks that, uh, that, uh, Sinu has, uh, overall anyway. So, I I'll be fine playing it. And Absolutely. Ratbo is back. We shall not give up. We shall stand and fight. Yeah, honestly, Rappo coming at it again. Um, I would say, you know, normally I would say, hey, Gnome, who do you think's favored in this matchup, the Rappo or the Setsu? But I already know it's the, the Setsu, right? You're going to say Setsu 100%. Yes, Because you yes, think is a Setsu. weak master in general. You think Setsu's an amazing master. Um, I agree, generally speaking, that Setsu is an amazing master, uh, and that Setsu probably has the advantage here. Um, honestly, it's I, I think we're falling into a uh, Zinu's Ratbo is a defensive, uh, like slower paced uh, deck. It goes to the late game a little bit more. Um, Darian Setsu, on the other hand, does not, and he showcased that he knows how to play aggro well and uh, close out games, so wouldn't I mean, I be think... surprised to see him just run this in. Definitely. I, mean, I would also say that I I believe Darian is one of the, the better or one of the best aggro players in Minimasters. He's played a lot, a lot of aggro, and I always feel like he performs really, really well when he does aggro. I do think he quite enjoys aggro decks as well. I think we're kind yeah. of kindred souls in some way or form. No, I, I agree. I think he, he likes aggro decks. And I think he's one of the best aggro players. And specifically one of the best Setsu players as well. That as well, sure. Yeah. So I, I would give Darian the edge here again. I'm not trying to be biased. It's, it's not that I love Setsu too much, okay, chat, I swear. But... Uh... Uh, that's not true. He loves Setsu too much. You, you, yes, you said you weren't going to talk about my body pillow apples. <clears throat> uh, I mean, I didn't mention the body pillow. You you opened up about that there, but you know you, you're not supposed to oh, say Lord. that out loud. I, uh, uh, you well, outed yourself. Oh yeah, it happens. What are you gonna do? Heard that. I guess I just gotta exchange it for for a Volko one. It's only, I, only one. You should you should exchange it for a Volko one. Volko is so handsome. True, true. Nice muscles as well. Good biceps. Good hammer. Yeah. Um, can you, can you focus on the game? No, yeah, no, yeah. you're getting sidetracked oh. a little bit. Look, look, look at, look at Zinyu taking the HP lead in the Ratbo Setsu matchup here. I saw that, but at the same time I thought, you know what, I think that uh, Darian is gonna smash the, this Ratbo to, uh, to bits after, uh, he reaches Perk 3, 
He does have a very, very slight, well, almost the same XP anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, even if, I mean, Tyrion, yeah, he's lost some HP. He's a bit below senior here, but he's not in a danger zone of dying anytime soon. And uh, I think that, especially once Setsu hits perk 3 versus Rappo's perk 3, which I have said is weak already, I think Setsu will run away with the game, and that will be the end. Mm -hmm. But that would mean, if Darien wins, that is a uh, reset, right? Wait. Um, Wait. If Darien... Math. Math, math, math is hard. <laughs> if Darien wins, it will be 3-1. Yes, and uh, and we will get a bracket reset. reset because, yeah, uh, Darien does indeed come from the loose bracket. I mean, I, I was pretty sure. I just need to double check. So, uh, do you want to see another five games uh, at post? Are you ready? I, Maybe. I'm ready. If it goes to it, I am ready. Well, I mean, I'm here. I'm I'm you're, you're gonna here. be here. I ain't going anywhere. I'm gonna stick around for these matches. Uh, Apples is here to stay. You heard him, Chad. He can never leave you now. He's gonna miss oh, it. I would never leave you, Chad. Chad, you're beautiful. There There's you heard some it. wonderful people in there. Wow, well, some. All right, all right. I, um, yeah, some. <clears throat> We're not gonna well, name names. Uh, well, Deering is getting closer to perk three anyhow, and uh, he hasn't lost too much more HP. I mean, it's basically losing the same amount, 400 on each side, I think, approximately. Yeah, Close roughly. Enough, anyway. And uh, a beam, which does not hit face, no. Then again, okay. That, I mean, beaming face always feels good, though, I have to say. Oh, when you can kill something and beam face, it, it feels so good. Yeah, like so, so beaming good. harbinger and face, you know? Um, then you just, you just smile. I want to I wanna mention, Zinyu just played stun lancers. Dyrian's about to hit perk 3. So yes, he, he won't have stun lancers to deal with this. Uh, he'll probably Daka. Oh, it doesn't go face anyway. He didn't have perk 3 yet, and he didn't go face with it. Nah, I mean, that was and... more like a defensive jump there, which is fine. I mean, now that he has laser, the grads are just gonna get annihilated anyway. Mm -hmm. Plus, the evolved marines take care of them. Anyhow, so not really too much to worry about. Well, being played there as well to just take care of everything top lane, really. But now mm -hmm. that uh, Deering has set to jump in hand again, plus two spells, he can easily start jumping on face and just annihilate the uh, HP pool of uh, the rat bow. Yeah. Oh, that is a beam on face though, and other minions. Yep. Durian is getting low here. Durian's, uh, Durian's 540 HP, that's two beam of dooms. Oh um, yeah, he's on, he's, he's on the clock here. And he, I mean, I, if I was in this situation, which I have been many times before, I generally try to be really aggressive and force the enemy player to be defensive instead of uh, me it's... having to be defensive. I, I think it comes back, I, I mentioned this earlier, and it's a really important thing. Um, first, actually, let's watch this, this exchange really quickly here. The Cleaver is going in. There's almost no way it'll end up hitting face, though. Zinyu is playing Rappa with perk 3. There's just too much. Uh, yeah. The Cleaver goes down. The Setsu manages to go down here as well, and he's back at base now. Zinyu just had to play a little defensive there, uh, as you, you were talking about. I mean, he almost not lost no HP, so it's not like he really... Yeah, I mean, he... He didn't lose anything for that at all. Um, the Daka really good for Zinyu there, deals with the, the Setsu, and meanwhile, Dirian has stuff on his tower here. He, he took a little more he, damage, not he, a lot. He, 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 he does anger the Shao though. He's a bit mad over there. Yeah, um, and this is another Cleaver marching in to, to fight these Scrats. I mean, I'm a bit surprised that Dirian doesn't try to fireball here to clear the way for the Cleaver to hit face, yeah. but it is a bit risky. That fair. laser, that, that shot from Setsu going down towards the bottom side there instead of hitting uh, Zinyu's tower was maybe a little unfortunate for Dirian. Um, Dirian's trying to stay alive here while also trying to, to find a window to do some damage. There's a beam which puts yeah, I mean, Dirian at 90 HP. Dirian is on the clock more than ever now. And. If you look at the XP count, he's on the clock in many aspects here. Oh, he's he is certainly he's certainly on the clock. This is this is definitely I mean, laser the window. The window is closing. Zinyu is at six, seven. There's scratch on Dirian's face. There's the beam of doom, and that's the game right there for Zinyu. Um, I... What, okay. what I was talking about before, what I was uh, starting to mention, is we we talked earlier. It's a uh, an important theory, especially in card games in general, but especially in card games. 
um, it's very easy to start to play to not lose, which is different than playing to win. Uh, when you play to win, you know, you, you take a bit more risk sometimes. Uh, yeah, you'll you make, make slightly more aggressive choices. Yeah, you make any play you can to just win the game. Yeah, yeah. Versus playing to not lose where you're you're trying to keep yourself in the game. And I I'd have to watch it again. Uh and I don't I don't obviously I Dirian's a very good player and he played that really well. But I I also I feel like maybe he fell into that same trap that we saw earlier where he he didn't take risks and because he didn't take risks and he was consistently just like slowly losing, he ended up losing in general, like trying to play not to lose. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean, as I said a bit earlier in that game, I do think that well, what I would have done in that situation as Setsu is that I would try my best to force the enemy to play defensively so that I wouldn't have to. And mm -hmm. it just ended up that Dirian did not go that aggressive towards Sinew, which meant that Dirian was on the defensive time and time again, and he just couldn't, he didn't really jump on face at all. Uh, so, he, he, I mean, also, he was on the clock there with the beam, and once he knew he was on the clock there with two beams, uh, then I, I, I really feel that like we've gone full smork and, uh, and tried to win that way. Even though, obviously, he could lose easily that way as well, so. Yeah, I mean, he could, there's definitely still a door to lose if he, if he goes for the aggressive play. Uh, but if you're slowly losing anyway you know why not take the the chance you know uh give yourself some kind of opportunity um yeah, so definitely. so it's it's 2-2 two -two now um it's tied up 2-2 two -two. the next game wins the set just a reminder uh for for people that haven't been here or are new to the format it's double elimination uh and Darian's from the losers bracket so if Darian wins this game we get a bracket reset and we'll see them play again if Zinyu wins then, then he takes he it all um now their games uh their their past set their the game that they played earlier on the set they played earlier on Zinyu won 3-2 in a very close set versus Dirian. Um be really interesting to see how that goes here. See if it's another close 3-2 for for Zinyu or if Dirian can pull out the win. Um also worth mentioning neither of them have played Milloween yet. In well, this I in mean... this set if there's right? any time to play the Mir Milloween mirror matchup, it must be in the final, potentially final game of the finals, right? Yeah, I mean, this is this is Darian's tournament life here. Um, well, where else are you supposed to play it? I, in the yeah. next tournament, <laughs> perhaps. I mean, or, I mean since Sinu has his extra life, then maybe he just says, ah, screw it, I'm not gonna play Milloween, I'm not gonna sink to those depths. Sorry that I'm a hillbilly right now, it just happens to, to be... Just happens sometimes, sometimes. That's, that's okay. So, uh, in that case, maybe Sinu just thinks, okay, I'm gonna not play that and play something else, because I just don't want to play Milloween. I mean, I don't think he likes the deck on a personal level, but I don't think necessarily that Dirian does either. I think most players don't on a personal level. They just play it to win. Yeah, I mean, probably. There's probably a decent amount of them. They, they don't actually love it. And there it is. It's the Milloween mirror matchup. Or, oh, we're getting super serious this one. All right. I'm ready for it. I mean, this time. Maybe we should just drop Paul on stream. Do you think it's going to be 10, 15, 20, or 25 minutes? Vote now and get a cookie as a reward. Do you think we're going to see a double frenzy uh, or just full frenzy matchup again? I I have another. Okay. Um, so in the the three minute sideboard time, the, the three minute opportunity there, I want to yep. I want to note. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys in on some secrets here. Okay, we're gonna look at the live chat here that, that our players are in. Uh, Zinyu didn't get up and go pee, and he said, "If you don't hurry up, I won't make it through the mat." Now this is a Milloween Milloween mat. The real question is, will Zinyu survive the match, honestly, you know? Like, I mean, at, at 15 well, minutes, when they're both at 3,000 life with 14 golems on each field from each player... The thing is, though, the thing is, you know, are you spectating <laughs> Dirian or Zinyu right now? I'm spectating Zinyu right now. Alright, well then you don't know what Dirian has in hand. 
I am excited suddenly. I know he has Blood Imps in this list. He's, he's played the Blood Imps out, I see. And what um, synergizes with Blood Imps, I wonder? I uh, obviously clear skies so he can heal himself. Hmm, yes, but there's another card that's dependent on life total. Uh, would you would you say that it's a colorful card? Does it have a color? Mm, yes, it, 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 it has a color at times, yes. Oh, it's, it's, a, a, it's a colorful card? Yes, yes. Is it, uh, is it perhaps a golem of some sort? Yes, it would be within that general description. It would be, it would would be within the golem general description. It, it has a color. Uh, let's see. Uh, could Dirian be playing the card that he is known for more than any other card? Could he be playing Red Gold? That might very well be a possibility. And considering his life total is quickly dropping, maybe we will find out. Never now, mind, healed again. Red Golem, Red Golem Milloween versus versus Clear Skies Milloween. I assume Dirian also has the Red Golem uh, or the Clear Skies in his Milloween. Um, yes. Is really interesting because uh, well, first of all, Zinyu is beating Dirian up right now. Actually, Dirian's at 300 life. Uh, the, the black hole and Dirian? that's game. The the black hole on the Red Golem into uh, Dirian with no mana because he just played Red Golem and Zinyu with two Arcane Golems shooting Dirian. Yikes. Um, well, all we right, I have to go. go. That's <laughs> I'm.